uh, west and the east, and good morning in the far west, and a happy new year from the fabulous Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas. Yes, today from the famous Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Philco Corporation brings you the broadcast of the annual Cotton Bowl New Year's Day Classic. The Longhorns of Texas will face the Volunteers of Tennessee. And today, Philco will also bring you the greatest news of the new year in radio and television for the home. During this 1953 Cotton Bowl broadcast, the new 1953 Philco radio and television sets will be announced with features and performance far beyond anything ever offered before to the American public. Yes, today you'll learn about the pace-setting new products from the Philco laboratories that you'll see at your Philco dealers in 1953. Superb new radios with a special service band. The first new radio service in years. Spectacular 1953 Golden Grid television sets with Philco advances that bring a new day in both UHF and VHF television. But uh, more of that uh, new day uh, a little bit later. In just a moment here, we're going to hear from uh, the Assistant Director of Sports for the National Broadcasting Company, Lindsay Nelson, who will bring you the play-by-play of this uh, Cotton Bowl broadcast from Dallas here today. This is Bob Murphy speaking, and the stands are filling up here as we look down upon them right now. Uh, one of the huge bands was on the field and circling the field as we look down below us. Bands from various parts of the state of Texas that have uh, come here today by virtue of the fact that they won in one of the most exacting band contests we have ever heard about. We saw the rehearsal yesterday afternoon, and it's really uh, something to see. As I said, the stands are filling up. The activity uh, is uh, beginning to be felt up here in the stands. The uh, sky is uh, a little bit cloudy. Uh, the temperature is uh, near 60. It really is a wonderful day for a football game. Teams were out here on the field just a moment ago uh, for their uh, pregame calisthenics. They have now left. And uh, down there on the field, because both teams have uh, identical school colors, we're going to ask, who is that down there? The Vols, is it? Oh, it's Texas down there on the field right now. The Texas band is down there on the field right now giving their uh, pregame uh, demonstrations. By the way, these five high school bands that we spoke about a moment ago uh, will give their demonstrations during the halftime. It really is quite a remarkable spectacle, too. Uh, we are uh, facing almost directly east here from our NBC Philco Broadcasting booth. The wind is coming out of the southwest today, and uh, it's pretty stout breeze, too. However, uh, both teams uh, take very seldom to the air. Uh, they both play uh, pretty much of a ground game, so the wind uh, is not considered, at least at this moment, to be a very serious factor in what is going to happen here in uh, the next few minutes as the 1953 Cotton Bowl game gets underway. As is a regular feature of many of these bowl games, the end zones are very beautifully uh, decked out today. Uh, lines, uh, chalk lines cut on the diagonal leave uh, diamonds uh, across the end zone. And in one here to our left, we see the letters T-E-N-N, the Tennessee end zone. And down here, of course, to our right, T-E-X-A-S. Just a moment ago, by the way, the new queen of the 1953 Cotton Bowl Festival uh, came in in a very handsome uh, coach and four and was crowned officially right down here on the 50-yard line in front of our broadcasting booth. She is from the University of Texas, Miss Kelly Luck. She will serve as the 1953 Cotton Bowl Queen. Uh, the flag of the Lone Star State is uh, waving briskly in that breeze that we mentioned a moment ago directly across uh, the stands as we speak to you here now. And, of course, on the right-hand side in its proper place, the stars and stripes. This really should be a, a football game here today. You folks who have followed um, the uh, adventures of Texas and Tennessee in this past season know that they have both come up with wonderful records. And uh, one of them, uh, a fine offensive record, and the other, one of the strongest defensive teams in the United States. Oh, we can't miss this. Uh, the Texas band here is formed, and beautifully formed, too, an outline of the map of the state of Texas. Really beautiful. As I was saying a moment ago, uh, the Texas team with a, an offensive uh, record that has piled up immense yardage, an average, I do believe, of almost 386 and a half, I believe, are the actual figures per game during this 1952 season, which they've just finished, and uh, the team from Tennessee with an excellent defensive record. Uh, if you've been reading the sports pages in your hometown, you know that General Robert Neeland has uh, been ill the last few days. We're all 
very happy as we look down upon the field here today. Uh, General Nealon, of course, being the famous coach, perhaps the, the most famous coach, the man who has added more innov innovations to uh, football than any other living American football coach, was out here on the field today looking very uh, fit and hearty and certainly will be on the job as the volunteers from Tennessee take the field here in just a few moments. Ed Price, uh, the uh, Texas coach, a man who was an eighth-letter uh, winner at the University of Texas and certainly one of their illustrious uh, alumni down here uh, earlier as the boys were out uh, running through their passing drills, their charging drills in the pregame calisthenics. Uh, a young man who has uh, certainly uh, built up a tremendous record here in his first two seasons at Texas. He has uh, won the conference championship both years, and nobody can ask for more than that. Speaking again of Texas's uh, remarkable offensive strength, they have an all-conference backfield at Texas this year. Uh, all four men who played regularly in the backfield made the uh, Southwest Conference uh, all-star team, a record that certainly uh, doesn't occur very often in uh, football. Two years ago, this very day, and this is the first time that two teams have ever repeated in the Cotton Bowl, these self-same teams, Texas and Tennessee, were down here on the field at this very minute getting prepared for the Cotton Bowl football game of 1951. And uh, the gentleman whose name I mentioned a moment ago, Lindsey Nelson, who will bring you the play-by-play, -play, uh, has a little story that refreshed the memories of all of us about the stars of that uh, year, uh, latter year, two years ago. So for a little uh, pre-game talk here and to introduce you to, to a fine young man you folks heard on the Army-Navy game uh, just a few weeks ago and who incidentally has uh, confined most of his broadcasting activities this football season to uh, television. I may say that we're here, Stan Edwin. Uh, we would like to introduce to you the story of uh, what happened here two years ago and also to introduce him to you, Lindsay Nelson, the Assistant Director of Sports for the National Broadcasting Company. Lindsay? Thanks very much, Bob Murphy. Down below us, before we mention the ball game a couple of years ago, let us say that the Sportsmanship Trophy for the Southwest Conference this year has been awarded to Rice Institute, and the Rice song has been played. The Texas band has gone into a huge block T, which, of course, is for the University of Texas. And as Bob has said, one of the great games of this Cotton Bowl series was played on New Year's Day of 1951, just two years ago this very day, when Tennessee met Texas. It was the first meeting in history between these two teams, and it was quite a ball game. Tennessee scored first when Harold Payne pitched a five-yard pass to John Grubel after Hank Lorisella had rambled 75 yards to set up the touchdown. And incidentally, Hank Lorisella is here in this crowd as a spectator this afternoon. In the second quarter of that game two years ago, Texas came back to tie the score as fullback Byron Townsend went around left hand for five yards in the touchdown. Later in the same period, Texas went ahead when Ben Tompkins pitched a 35-yard pass to Gib Dawson, who will be playing for Texas again today. Neither team scored in the third quarter. And then in the fourth period, Tennessee came roaring back to score twice and win the ball game by a score of 20 to 14. The star of the day was a man named Andy Kozar, Tennessee's pile-driving fullback. Andy is back today. He's here in the Cotton Bowl. However, he is recovering from an injury that he suffered in the Florida game. He will not be in uniform, but will be here, and we hope to have him here in this broadcast booth at halftime today. So this afternoon, we have Tennessee and Texas squaring off once again. And as Bob Murphy has said, this is the first time in Cotton Bowl history that any visiting team has ever been invited to appear in the Cotton Bowl for a second time. During the regular season, Texas went undefeated in Southwest Conference competition, while Tennessee went undefeated in Southeastern Conference competition. However, the Longhorns lost on consecutive Saturdays early in the season to non-conference opponents in Notre Dame and Oklahoma. After that, the Longhorns rolled over Arkansas, Rice, SMU, Baylor, TCU, and Texas A&M. Prior to those intersectional games, they had defeated LSU, and they had also beaten North Carolina. Tennessee lost an early season game to Duke University, a non-conference opponent, and the balls were tied inside their own league by the Kentucky Wildcats. Otherwise, Tennessee defeated Mississippi State, Chattanooga, Alabama, Wofford, North Carolina, Louisiana State, Florida, and Vanderbilt. Texas and Tennessee, as Bobby said, have the very same colors. Both schools use orange and white. Two years ago when these teams met, Texas wore white jerseys while Tennessee wore their traditional orange shirts. Today, the procedure has been reversed. Today, Texas we is wearing orange. Tennessee is wearing white. The Vols have always worn orange jerseys, except for one season that was in 1935 and was one of the most disastrous seasons that Tennessee ever had. After that, they switched back to orange. They have worn orange jerseys every game until this afternoon. General Bob Nealon, the famed head coach of the Vols, who has been ailing, 
and uh, his doctors would not permit him to return to Knoxville from Florida, where he was resting to prepare the Tennessee team for the game. He is here. Harvey Robinson has been the man in charge preparing Tennessee for this ball game as the acting head coach and athletic director. However, the general flew into Dallas Tuesday evening. He's here today. He will be on the bench this afternoon. And now the Texas band down to our right, which is the south end of the field, is forming into a victory lane where they will stay until the teams come onto the field. The Tennessee band will be on this field very shortly. And so to tell you all about that, here once again is Bob Murphy. All right, Lindsay, you catch your breath because it's, it promises to be a very breathless afternoon here in the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. There's 75,504 seats in the Cotton Bowl. And it looks very much as though they're all going to be loaded here in the next uh, 20 minutes before game time because this huge stadium is almost uh, filled right now. Uh, here comes the Tennessee band right now, as Lindsay mentioned a moment ago. By the way, we have the unusual uh, situation here of a football team that has a tri-captaincy in the Texas squad this year. They are Richard Ochoa, whose name I think has been mentioned here already by Lindsay. Uh, back, 6 feet 2, 200 pounds, uh, 21 years old. Uh, Bill McDonald, the class of 53, uh, who is a center of 6 feet 2, 190 pounds, and Jack Barton, class of 53, a center who, uh, uh, 6 uh, 1, weighs 205 pounds. And uh, uh, so there is a very unusual situation. Three young men who must be very highly thought of by their fellow players uh, to make room for all of them uh, on this uh, team here this year from Texas. You know, a football game like this famous Cotton Bowl event just naturally reminds you that it's great to have a portable radio to pick up the game, to pick up scores, to take along wherever you go. Well, 1953 is bringing you a sensational new personal portable from Philco with the amazing battery saver switch. The battery saver switch plus Philco's long life batteries means unmatched economy of operation. Gives you many more hours of clear powerhouse reception. But that's just part of the story. This 1953 Philco portable is a real eye catcher too in an inspired new cabinet that comes in a choice of colors. It operates on AC, DC, or batteries, has Philco's Magna Core Aerial and a special plug-in for private listening. So see, hear, and own the 1953 portable radio with the battery saver switch from Philco, world's largest radio and television manufacturer. Well, here comes the, the volunteer band now. They're out on the field, as we mentioned a moment ago. Both teams have almost uh, identical orange colors, the predominant color of their school. However, we notice the band uniforms down here uh, of the uh, Tennessee group are a little, bit, uh, a little bit lighter, not as dark and orange as those of uh, our friends from Texas. They've uh, made a formation there in the field right now. The big suit of bones, uh, well polished up for the occasion. The sun is breaking through the crowd, uh, clouds over here to our right, and apparently the weather is moving from the west. And before the game is over today, there will be very little overcast at all, we all expect, and uh, we'll all be working out here in the sun. Uh, the uh, ceremonies between now and uh, the time the game begins at 1 o'clock plan to be very impressive, beginning in just a moment here now. According to the schedule of events, of events uh, which the officials uh, guarantee are, are going to operate on schedule, beginning with the, the toss of the coin down here in the center of the field, which is scheduled in just a, a matter of minutes, uh, followed by the, the invocation. The uh, Texas band uh, marching around in the center of the field now. Forming uh, another figure down there. The public address announcer said something about the Memphis Blues here, and we're trying to figure out what that figure is. And as we look down in the field uh, over there on the far side where the public transportation comes up and the uh, parking lot, which yesterday as we came up here to prepare for this broadcast was very empty, is now absolutely filled to capacity with automobiles and a long string uh, of people uh, are marching over here to the Cotton Bowl to see this, the 17th, I believe, uh, renewal of this famous clash. The first time that two teams have ever appeared, the same two teams, I should say, have ever appeared a second time in the Cotton Bowl. Uh, this broadcast is being brought to you by Philco Corporation, uh, world's largest radio, television, uh, radio and television manufacturer. By the way, during the halftime of uh, today's game, we're going to have some very interesting uh, guests on the program. Andy Kozar, the hardest-running offensive fullback that the University of Tennessee has uh, ever boasted in the opinion of many authorities on Tennessee football teams, is going to be our guest. A young man who was... Uh, could not appear in this contest because of an injury uh, two games before the season ended this year. 
and uh, two very distinguished newspaper men uh, who are appearing here today to cover for their various newspapers. By the way, one of them is the president of the Football Writers Association of America. We pause now briefly for 10 seconds for station identification. This is Bob Murphy again speaking to you from the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas. The uh, 17th renewal of the Cotton Bowl Classic from the Cotton Bowl here in Dallas. And great activity is holding forth down there on the field below. Uh, welcome to all of the stations who may have joined us in just the last few seconds. In order to bring you the uh, Cotton Bowl broadcast, we wish to thank the following programs regularly heard in these periods over most NBC stations for relinquishing their time today. Strike It Rich, sponsored by Colgate Palmolive Pete, Dr. Paul, sponsored by Wesson Oil, Double or Nothing, sponsored by Campbell Soup, Dial Dave Garraway, sponsored by Armor and Company, Bob Hope, sponsored by General Foods, Inside News from Hollywood, sponsored by Hazel Bishop, Life Can Be Beautiful, Road of Life, Pepper Young's Family, Right to Happiness, and Backstage Wife, sponsored by Procter & Gamble, Stella Dallas and Young Winter Brown, sponsored by Sterling Drug. Hear all of these programs at their regularly scheduled time tomorrow. And this, the broadcast of the Cotton Bowl Classic from Dallas, is being brought to you by Philco Corporation, world's largest radio and television manufacturer. The Texas band is down in the field, and they have just uh, completed forming the famous uh, Star of Texas down there. They are now facing the far stands over there, formed in uh, four columns wide. Might tell you a little something about these two schools here in the brief moment we have before the uh, invocation, which is due uh, momentarily now. The University of Texas uh, is formed at uh, Knoxville, uh, is uh, placed at Knoxville, Tennessee, a city of 212,000, industrial and agricultural center of East Pennsylvania at the foothills of the Great Smokies. A member of the Southeastern Conference and a team, uh, their football team has certainly had a very wonderful uh, uh, record in that conference. The volunteers, of course, is what they're called. Uh, their band is a 100-piece uh, aggregation. Uh, the pride of the Southland. The enrollment uh, down there in Tennessee is around 7,700. Most of them are boys. And the colors of the school, as we mentioned before, are orange and white. The orange is just a little lighter than Texas's color. Tennessee, however, as uh, Lindsey uh, Nelson uh, told you here a few moments ago, will wear white jerseys for this game. And frankly, they're not too keen about it because the one season in their whole history in which they wore those white jerseys, they had a very difficult time. The University of Texas is located at Austin, Texas, a member of the Southwestern Conference, the uh, defending champions right now and winner of the Southwestern Conference for the past two years. They call themselves the Longhorns, and they have a mascot, uh, which, by the way, Tennessee does not have, uh, Bebo the Fifth, a shorthorn steer that they led in here just a moment ago and is at a place of high honor over there in the far side of the field as I speak to you right now. Texas is uh, somewhat larger in uh, student body than uh, Tennessee, about 12,500 students, co-educational uh, school, of course, and a fine place for the young ladies, too, because there's about 8,500 young men at the University of Texas. They have a 200-piece band here today, and uh, the mascot, Bebo, we told you about, and, of course, the alma mater song is The Eyes of Texas. Well, they're um, marching, the two bands are... Uh, marching down to uh, take their places together in the end zone there now. And apparently uh, this uh, little uh, pre-game demonstration of the school bands has just about come to an end, and we can expect the invocation here momentarily. We think that we should have the official lineups as they will go on the field here. So uh, let's turn back again now to uh, Lindsey Nelson, who will bring you the play-by-play, -play, the assistant director of sports for NBC, and those starting lineups. Lindsey? All right, Bob, out on the side of the field, we'll have the toss of the coin momentarily. However, we will give you the starting offensive lineups of these two teams, and then we'll give you the defensive lineups as we go along. For the Tennessee Volunteers, coached by General Bob Nealon, using the single-wing offense and wearing white jerseys at left end, John Davis. He's 6'1", 180, and he is a native of Texas. At left tackle, Dick Mayock. He is 5'11", 200-pounder from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. At left guard, Earl Campbell. He is 5'6", 180-pounder from Elizabethton, Tennessee. At center, Roger Best. He is 6'1", 200 pounds from Detroit, Michigan. At right guard, John Michaels. He's the captain, 5'10", 195 pounds, an All-American guard from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. At right tackle, Bob Arsery. He is a freshman, 6 feet 3 inches tall, 205 pounder from Raleigh, North Carolina. And at right end, Vic Kolenic. He is 5'11", 180 pounder from Lynchburg, Virginia. At blocking back for Tennessee, Hal Hubbard. He is 5'10", 175 pounder from Lynchburg, Virginia. 
At wingback, Ed Morgan, he is 6'1", 190 pounder from Hendersonville, North Carolina. At fullback, Ray Bird, he is 6'1", 184 pounder from Knoxville, Tennessee. And at tailback, Jimmy Wade, he is 5'11", 165 pounder from Lynchburg, Virginia. Defensively, the Vols will probably use a basic six-man line on the 2-2-1 secondary. However, they also may employ a five-man line in a 5-4-2. For the Texas Longhorns, coached by Ed Price, using the split C offense and wearing orange jerseys. At left end, Gilmer Spring. He is 6'1", 190 pounder from Lufkin, Texas. At left tackle, Buck Lansford. He's 6 feet 2 inches tall, 215 pounder from Carrizo Springs, Texas. At left guard, Don McGraw. He is 5'11", 217 pounder from Abilene, Texas. And now here is the invocation. Welcome to at the beginning of this special occasion in the Cotton Bowl. We call today that all that is said and done here today may be clean and fine and true. In accordance with the high standards of both like the late Dan D. Rogers, who has given so much of time and talent to make possible this annual event. And at the beginning of this new year, we humbly invoke thy blessing upon us, upon those of our families and fellow citizens on Korean battlefields and elsewhere away from home, upon our strife-torn, chaotic, and embattled world, and upon our nation in the year ahead, that you may continue to be the land of the free, and the home of the brave. In Christ's name, Amen. We've just heard the invocation, and very shortly the teams will be coming onto the field. Here is the national anthem. National anthem played by the combined bands, and very shortly the teams will be coming on. However, we'll continue now with the Texas lineup. At center, Bill McDonald, 6'2", 190 pounder from Orange, Texas. At right guard, Phil Bright, 6 feet tall, 205 pounder from Gaston, Texas. Right tackle, Charles Gentner, 6'2", 215 from Dallas, Texas. And at right end, Tom Stolhansky, 6'2", 210 from Baytown, Texas. At quarterback, P. Jones, 6'1", 170 pounder, Childress, Texas. Left half, Gib Dawson, 5'11", 175 pounder from Douglas, Arizona. Right half, Billy Quinn, 5'11", 180 from San Antonio. And at fullback, Dick Ochoa, 6'2", 200 pounder from Laredo, Texas. And Texas will employ a basic five-man line on defense. Now the teams will be on shortly, and once again to tell you about that, here's Bob Murphy. All right, Lindsay, uh, the uh, band played a tremendous fanfare there. Incidentally, uh, the Star Spangled Banner was played by the mass bands of both universities. And here they come now. They introduced uh, General Bob Neyland and the great team from the University of Tennessee, the Volunteers. The Texas lads are coming out here now. The Volunteers have uh, still come out uh, from the runway down here. Everybody's looking expectantly over there. The cheer went up, but uh, from the, the Tennessee Rooters, but as yet they, uh, they have not appeared. Both bands are lined up, uh, incidentally, so you get the picture here, uh, down on the uh, south end of the field here, as uh, so the teams and the coaches can uh, walk between them or uh, really run between them, because actually that's what they do. Uh, General Nealon, being a man who uh, can uh, split uh, many a fine hair when he's playing this game of football, is probably back to using all of the, the time that is at his disposal. Uh, he, he doesn't leave one stone unturned. 
watching them out here on the field today as they went through their pregame uh, uh, exercising and punting and so on. He stands back there right to the last minute giving instructions before the lads uh, went back into the dressing rooms. And now we see them in their unfamiliar white jerseys, the, the volunteers walking out on the concrete runway there very gingerly in their spikes. And now you hear the cheer for the volunteers from Tennessee. Let's listen. Now both teams are finally out on the field. Right down below us here will be the uh, the Texas bench. And on the far side of the field there, in those unfamiliar white uh, jerseys with the orange letters, the Volunteers from Tennessee. This broadcast of the Cotton Bowl Classic is being brought to you by Philco. And to set the pace in portables for 1953, Philco announces a new money-saving feature and a glamorous new power pack personal portable radio. The cabinet design is new, really inspired, and yours in a choice of colors. You get that rich powerhouse reception that's the hallmark of a Philco radio. And now with this 1953 model that's just off the assembly line, Philco brings you the amazing battery saver switch. This new feature, combined with Philco's extra long-life batteries, brings unmatched economy of operation for longer performance. So get yours at your Philco dealers now. Here is the Tennessee alma mater. Texas alma mater. Texas alma mater, the eyes of Texas are upon you. And, uh, of course, with the preponderance of Texas people here today, uh, the huge cheer went up as they finished. Both bands, incidentally, make a wonderful spectacle down there at the far end of the field. They're now going over to take their places that have been arranged for them on the sidelines so that they can watch this famous uh, Cotton Bowl Classic between the University of Tennessee and, of course, their own Longhorns from the University of Texas. The sun is coming through that overcast now, and as we look over here to our left, uh, the sky is clearing. It looks like we're going to have a real sunny day. The temperature again, I'll let you know how the weather is down here in the sunny south. It is sunny. It's uh, almost 60 here today. Really a fine day for football. The field is dry. We had rain two days ago, but it's in uh, wonderful condition right now. Two teams are beginning to, uh, the starting teams apparently, are taking their places out there in the field. So we're going to take 10 seconds now to pause briefly for station identification. This is WMAQ and WMAQ-FM, NBC in Chicago. And now to tell you the story of this Cotton Bowl game of 1953, here is the assistant director of sports for the National Broadcasting Company, Lindsey Nelson. Lindsay? Thanks, Bob Murphy. Down on the field below now, the ball game will be getting underway in just a moment, and Tennessee will kick off and defend the south goal. Texas will receive and defend the north goal. Kicking off for Tennessee will be Ralph Adams. He is a freshman, 5 feet 11 inches tall, 200 pounder from Lawrenceburg, Tennessee. He will kick off, of course, from his own 40-yard line. The sun is shining. The Cotton Bowl, a sellout crowd as always. 75,500 for tickets to this ball game sold. 
And still coming in, of course, the two deep men for Texas will be Jimmy Pace and Gib Dawson. Jimmy Pace, who started the season as a regular right halfback as a senior. Gib Dawson also as a senior. Two veterans standing back there in the end zone. The officials, the referee is Alvin Bell of Vanderbilt. The umpire is Bailey McElrath of Centenary. The headlinesman is Bob Caldwell of Mississippi State. The field judge is John Morrow of Texas A&M. And the timer is Al Bushman of Missouri Wesleyan. The two teams are down below. Now they are lined up. We are awaiting official kickoff time as referee... Alvin Bell is downfield, and the field judge, John Morrow, is standing there as Ralph Adams gets the ball set on the kicking tee. Here comes the field judge over to the sideline. This ball game will be underway momentarily. Ralph Adams waiting now for the referee's whistle. There goes Alvin Bell's hand down. Here comes Adams. The kick is in the air, and the ball game's underway. Hits on the 17, bounce to the 10, taken by Pace on the 7, returns to the 10, up to the 15, along the 19, and he's hit there spinning, and he's still finally on about the 15. Adams came downfield to make the tackle along with McCroskey. And the ball is going to be placed down on the 15-yard line. First and 10 now for Texas. They held the ball on their own 15-yard line in the backfield for Texas. T. Jones at quarterback. Gib Dawson at left half. Dick Ochoa at fullback and Billy Quinn at right half. Here they move out of the huddle, left of the line, moving into their T formation. They run from the split T. T. Jones looks up and down the line of scrimmage. Under now, Tennessee moving the defense in close. They're in that 5-4-2 right now. Here is the ball to Jones. He gives a handoff to the right halfback. It's to Billy Quinn. Hits into the line. Picks up two to the 17 and pushed back. Francis Holohan on the bottom of the sack as he picked up two. Sophomore Billy Quinn, who played his greatest game right here on this very same gridiron this year, as he came into his own against Oklahoma and held the right halfback berth ever since. Second and eight now for Texas, and they have the ball on their own 17-yard line. Francis Holohan, the defensive captain for Tennessee, and defensive guard with the man who led the pack in there. Here is a flanker. It's Gib Dawson flanked out five yards outside the right end. T. Jones waits, gets the ball this time. He's handing it off. It's to Quinn, going wide to the left. Gets up to the 20, across the 20, and on down to the 25-yard line. Mac Franklin came in with Bob Fisher to make the tackle. As the ball was moved up to the 25-yard line, he was run out of bounds, so the ball's going to be brought into the inbounds marker. 53 feet, 4 inches from the far side of the field. Moves up to the 25. And it is very, very close to a first down. Less than a yard to go. Third and less than a yard to go for Texas. as the Longhorns move with Billy Quinn carrying the ball on the two plays thus far. Here's a flanker's flank three yards outside the right end, and that's Billy Quinn. T. Jones gets the ball. Quarterback sneak moves through. Gets to the 30. Out in the open to the 35. He's hit on the 35. Finally brought down by Hugh Garner, defensive left halfback. From La Follette, Tennessee. And that is the first, first down of the ball game. First and ten for the Texas Longhorns. As T. Jones, the number one passer in the Southwest Conference, and he also led the Southwest Conference in total offense, ran the ball himself on the split tee right up the middle, moved out to the right, and moved it to the 35. Here they are, T formation. T. Jones in there, gets the ball. Here's the handoff up the middle to Dick Ochoa. Across the 40, down to the 43-yard line. Marvish and Muller, the defensive linebackers, converging. They're dragging down. As the ball is placed down, it's near the 42, so call it again a seven. Dick Ochoa going up the middle. So it's going to be second down. And about three yards to go. And now Tennessee is calling timeout. Tennessee is calling time as Texas is moved for a first down. They have their offense scoring. The volunteers want to talk it over. Well, Lindsay, it's still too early to spot today's football winner, but there's one unquestioned champion that will appear tomorrow at your Philco dealers, friends. It's that unmatched 1953 Philco clock radio. The best tomorrow in the world's only multi-wave clock radio from Philco. They're coming up to the line again. So uh, back in just a moment here to our friend Lindsay Nelson. Play is about to go in again, so here's Lindsay. Across the way, the Longhorn Band is playing. Let's listen. Texas has the ball, second down, three yards to go. They have it on their own 42-yard line, and they're set to go. T. Jones under calling starting signals. Now takes a look around. Now he's back under there. Gets the ball. Here's the handoff going to the right halfback. Billy Quinn hits into the 44-yard line, hit down on the 44. Bob Fisher and Francis Holohan brought him down on the 44. So it's going to be third down, and it is just short of a first down, I believe. As they get him unstacked, we'll take a look. Alvin Bell, the referee, takes a look over. It's third and one. Third down and one yard to go for the Texas Longhorns, wearing their traditional orange jerseys, white numerals, Tennessee, and white jerseys and orange numerals. 
Here down and one to go for the Texas Longhorns. They set a new Southwest Conference record for offense this year. One of the great offensive teams in the nation. Here they are up there in the T formation. Tennessee into a seven-man line, a seven dialing. Here's the handoff, and he's going to give Dawson hits in. Very close to our first down. We'll have to wait till get him on stack. Bill Barbish, the linebacker, came in. Moose Barbish and Andy Myers on the bottom of the stack. And it's a first down for Texas. The Longhorns have picked up their second consecutive first down. So they have it first and ten, and they have it on their own 45-yard line. The Longhorns started on their own 15. They've driven to their own 45. Coming up with the ball now, try captain Bill McDonald, the offensive center. They're in a T formation. T. Jones, the quarterback. Gets the ball. Here is the handoff, and it's going to Dick Coach to Gib Dawson as he cuts out to the right and moves up to the 49-yard line. Hugh Garner came in to make the tackle as Gib Dawson carried the ball to the 49-yard line again. Of course, it's going to be second and six. The Texas Longhorns moving in this Texas backfield is T. Jones, the number one pass on the conference. He led the conference in total offense. Gib Dawson, the unanimous choice for all conference for the second straight year. Billy Quinn, who led the conference in scoring with 78 points and set a new touchdown record for sophomores with 13. And Dick O'Chore, the leading ball carrier on the Southwest Conference. That's the offensive backfield in there now for Texas. Here is the handoff. It's going to Dick Ochoa. Hires off left tackle and moves up to the 46-yard line of Tennessee. Gene Moeller in to make the tackle with Andy Myers. As the ball moved across the midfield strike, and now the Longhorns have moved into Tennessee territory. They're on the 46 again at five yards on the place, so it's third down and a yard to go. The Longhorns have picked up a couple of first downs, and now they're on the Tennessee 46-yard line. They have driven steadily. Tennessee coming into this ball game had the number one defensive team in the nation. These Texas Longhorns had a great offensive team. They set a new Southwest Conference team in offense, and they have driven from their own 15 to the Tennessee 46. Here they are, up there again, in T formation, running from the split T. T. Jones gets the ball, goes up the middle, moves across the 45 into the 44 for the first down. Holohan and Myers in to make the tackle. Holohan and Myers in there to drag it down. It's a first down for Texas. So now the Longhorns have picked up their third consecutive first down, and they have the ball on the Tennessee 44-yard line. T. Jones wedging them out. They call him the comeback kid because he was so late uh, coming along as a T formation quarterback. Under there now. Here is the pitch out. It's going wide this time to Gib Dawson. He gets up to the 44, gained up about a yard to the 43, and Hugh Garner came up from the secondary along with Mac Franklin to make the tackle. So call it again of a yard to the 43, and it's going to be second down and nine yards to go. This broadcast of the Cotton Bowl game brought to you by Philco Corporation, presenting the world's only multi-wave radio with a special service band. There is no score in the ball game. We're in the first quarter of the sunny shining. 75,504 fans here at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas. Second and nine for the Longhorns, and they have the ball on the Tennessee 43. They're up there in T formation. Tennessee in a 6-2-2-1 defense. Here's the snap taken by Jones. Pitches out wide. It's going to Billy Quinn on the sweep. Running along the 45. Gets up to the 40. Run out of bounds on the 40-yard line. Doug Atkins, Tennessee's gigantic defensive tackle. Finally ran him out of bounds. Atkins, 6 feet, 6 inches tall. Weighs 240 pounds from Humboldt, Tennessee. So it's a gain of three yards on a wide sweep to the left. The ball carried to the right halfback. Billy Quinn, the sophomore sensation of Texas. So it's going to be third down and six. Third down and six yards to go for the Texas Longhorns. And they have the ball on the Tennessee 40-yard line. Having driven from their own 15... No score, nothing, nothing. First quarter. Texas with a flank of right. It is Billy Quinn. Flank three yards outside the right end. T. Jones gets the ball, fading back for the first pass of the ball game. Throws down the middle, and it's complete down to the 31 yard line to Gilmer Spring. Gilmer Spring hit on the 31 by Jerry Hyde. It's a first down for Texas. T. Jones passing to Gilmer Spring, the first pass of the ball game. And it was good for nine yards in the first down. Jerry Hyde, the defensive halfback for the University of Tennessee, came up to make the tackle, and now Texas is calling timeout. So in plays with them, Texas will have the ball first down, 10 yards to go. They'll have it on the Tennessee 31, but time is out now. Tomorrow you can see it at your Philco dealers, friends. The new 1953 Philco, America's greatest clock radio. It's the world's only clock radio with all the features, plus the first new radio service in years. It's not only a dependable, soothing alarm that lets you go to sleep and wake up to music. A Philco clock radio is your automatic servant, too. Turns on appliances like your television set or the bottle warmer for that 3 a.m. baby's bottle. Yet in addition to all this, a Philco clock radio also brings you the drama and excitement of the Philco special service band. 
Along with the regular programs, you can tune the frequencies for ships at sea, planes in the air, police calls, forest fire reports. The only clock radio that has it is the new 1953 multi-wave Philco. Get yours from an array of sparkling new models from Philco, world's largest radio and television manufacturer. Well, the lads are down in the field, down in one knee, uh, taking a little breather here. Some of them have their helmets on. The Texas boys here almost directly in front of our broadcasting booth, and the defensive unit of the University of Tennessee spread out here uh, down a little bit further to our right. Uh, Texas has uh, really come on very strong here in this first quarter. Unofficially, eight minutes and uh, 45 seconds left to play. Here's Lindsay. Texas, first and ten on the Tennessee 31. T. Jones has the ball. Here's the pitch out and coming wide. It's Gib Dawson. Ted going. He's thrown all the way back on his on the Tennessee 39 by Mac Franklin. Mac Franklin, defensive left end. 6'1", 190 pounder from Madisonville, Tennessee, came in to throw Dawson all the way back on the 39 for a loss of eight yards. So it's going to be second and 18. However, there's a handkerchief on the play. Texas was offside on the play. So now Tennessee has a choice. Do they want to take the offside or do they want to take the play, in which case the down does count and they lose eight yards and the penalty is refused. The penalty wisely is refused because the down counts, so it's going to be second and 18 for Texas and they have the ball on the 39-yard line of Tennessee and that is the first loss of the ball game for the Texas Longhorns who took this ball on the opening kickoff on their own 15. They ran the kickoff back to their 15 from the 7 and then they have driven steadily downfield. Here they are up there, second and 18 on the Tennessee 39-yard line. T. Jones running to the left this time, pitches out to Quinn. It's Quinn on the sweep to the left. He's looking for a receiver. Throws incomplete. It's an incompleted forward pass. As it was the pass going to the left, the right halfback running to the left, looked downfield. Bill Barbies was the man in there on him as he came up. And so Rice Badley, the pass uh, did not fall near a receiver. So it is third and 18, and the ball is still on the Tennessee 39-yard line. Across the way, General Bob Nealon of Tennessee in his brown overcoat, gray suit as always, and gray hat seated on the end of the bench there near the phone. One of the great athletes in his undergraduate days at West Point where he was a football teammate of Dwight D. Eisenhower. Third and 18 now for the Texas Longhorns, and they have the ball on the Tennessee 39. They have a flanker out to the right this time. That's Gib Dawson, flank five yards outside the right end. T. Jones gets the ball, fades back, looks now, and it is Dawson carrying wide to the left as he got the handoff. He's to the 40. And is hit finally on the 37-yard line. Doug Adkins came into Spilly on the 37. A pile up on the far side. The ball will be brought into the inbounds marker. It may be near the 38. If it is, we'll spot it there. It was a variation of the old Statue of Liberty as T. Jones, the quarterback, took it, faded back, handed off to Dawson, the flanker right. He went wide to his left. It's near the 38. So call it again of a yard. It is going to be fourth and 17. Godzak is back in single safety. Ed Godzak, a freshman, back in single safety for Tennessee. And coming back to kick now for Texas is Gib Dawson, kicking from the Tennessee 49. Godzak's backing up to his own five-yard line. Hands out stretch now. Dawson waits, gets the ball, gets the kick away. It is over near the sideline, hitting on the 10, bounding to the 5. Godzak picks it up, fumbles it, picks it up. He's hit on the 4-yard line. A beautifully placed kick by Kim Dawson. Hit on about the 12, bound to the 10, down to the 5 at the 4. Godzak picked it up, dropped it, picked it up, and was smothered. McGraw and Gilmer Sprank smothered him on about the 4-and-a-half. So to keep it even, we'll call it the 5-yard line as they start this series of downs. First and ten now for Tennessee as they have the ball for their first offensive try of the afternoon. First down and ten yards to go, and they have the ball on their own five-yard line. Huddling back in the end zone. Here they come out of the huddle and up to the line. They're moving into deep punt formation, and back there in deep punt formation is Shires. Pat Shires standing deep, gets the snap now, follows the ball in the end zone. He's going to try to run it out. Can't get out, and he is being hit for a safety. Shires hit him his end zone for a safety as Jim Rosser and Pod Price were in there on him and Texas leads by a score of two to nothing. Here is the play in deep punt formation with Pat Shires of Tennessee. Got the pass from center, bobbled it, picked it up, tried to run it out, couldn't get out with it. He was hit back there and Texas leads in this ball game by a score of two to nothing, the first safety of the day. Tennessee will now have a free kick from the 20-yard line. They'll yeah, have a free kick from the 20 as the Texas Longhorns have moved out in front here with 7 minutes and 12 seconds remaining to be played in the first period. Coming into this ball game, as you may know, Texas was favored by about uh, one and a half points. And the Texas Longhorns now lead by two. 
This broadcast, of course, brought to you by Philco. And remember, Philco Talk Radio is for 1953 with new history-making low price. Tennessee now will have the free kick from the 20-yard line. Ralph Adams is placing the ball down. The receiving team is in for Texas, meaning that Jimmy Price and Cameron are the deep men along their own 20-yard line. Cameron and Price, the deep men, along the Texas 20. Ralph Adams is placing the ball down on the 20-yard line on the kicking tee. Texas 2, Tennessee nothing. 7 minutes, 12 seconds remaining to be played in this, the first period. Waiting now for the referee's whistle for this free kick from the 20-yard line. Field judge comes over to move the Texas players back in the sideline slightly. Here's the whistle. Here comes Adams forward. Here's the kick. It is a sailor, a spiraling kick that's hitting on the 37. Finally taken on the 30 by Pace. Back to the 35, the 40, and he is filled on the 43-yard line of Texas. John Michaels of Tennessee in to make the tackle. So it's going to be first down, 10 yards to go for Texas as they have the ball on their own 43. John Michaels, Tennessee's All-American guard and captain, coming in to make the tackle. Texas, of course, with a couple of All-Americans. Tom Stolhansky, a very great end. And Harley Sewell, one of the greatest guards in the history of Texas football. The Longhorns are up there now. T formation, first and ten on their own 43. T. Jones is in and under, looking around before calling starting signals. Gets the ball now. Spins, hands it off. It is to Ochoa, going up the middle. He is going across the 50, fumbles. However, the whistle may have sounded before he fumbled on the 49-yard line of Tennessee. It's on the 49-yard of Tennessee, and Texas is in possession. Jerry Hyde came up along with Gene Moeller to make the tackle. The whistle had blown before the ball bobbled away, and so it's across midfield. It's going to be second down and two. Second down and two as the ball has moved just across the 50-yard line into Tennessee territory. Here are the Longhorns up there now in T formation. T. Jones calling starting signals. Texas leading two to nothing. Spinning now and handing it off. It goes to Ochoa up the middle, and he picked up a couple of yards. Andy Myers and Doug Atkins on the bottom of the stack. As they get them unstacked, it'll be very, very close to a first down. Picking them off one by one is the referee. He takes a look across to the sideline. They may ask for a measurement. That's exactly what they're going to do. They're going to bring out the chain to see whether this is or is not a first down. It's on about the 47-yard line, so the chain will be brought out, and we'll see whether Texas has picked up another first down. One of the great offensive teams of Southwest Conference history... The chain is being stretched. It's a first down for Texas. First and ten for Texas, and they have the ball on the Tennessee 47-yard line. Here they move, snapping out of the huddle and up to the line. T. Jones, the man under. Here's the snap. He takes it this time. He's handing off to Billy Quinn. Quinn cuts across left tackle, moves across the 45 and on down to the 43-yard line. Andy Myers and Doug Atkins in to make the tackle on the 43. Again, a four yards on the play. There's going to be second down and six. Second and six for Texas, and they held the ball on the Tennessee 43-yard line. James Carroll T. Jones, the quarterback for Texas, the comeback kid. Call that because he developed belatedly into a T quarterback. He played defensive halfback on the 1950 Texas team. Texas up there in C formation. Tennessee in a 6 2 2 1. Linebacker standing in to make it a 7 diamond in effect. T. Jones gets the ball spent, handing it off this time to Ochoa, going up the middle across the 40 and down to the 39 yard line. Bob Fisher and Francis Holohan dragged him down on the 39. Again, a four yard, so it's going to be third and two. A Longhorn eating up yardage as they have moved down to the 39 yard line. Going to be third down and two yards to go for the Texas Longhorns. Texas leading by a score of two to nothing by virtue of a first quarter safety. Moon is in the ball game now offensively at right end for Texas. Howard Moon is in there. Carlton Massey at the other end. Texas up there in T formation. Tennessee with uh, a linebacker standing in a seven diamond. Here's the handoff, and it's going to Billy Quinn. He cuts across right tackle. Moved it down very close to the 36-yard line. Bill Barbie's in to make the tackle, and they might have picked up another first down. We can't tell until they get them unstacked. The referee picking them off. A big pile up there is Billy Quinn took the ball, cut off right tackle. And now again, they're going to bring out the chain. They're going to bring out the chain to see whether he did or did not pick up a first down. It's being brought out now. The referee, Alvin Bell of Vanderbilt, standing there. Offensive end coming back in for Texas now. Gilmer Spring and Tom Stolhansky coming back into the ball game. It is not a first down. It's going to be fourth and about a foot to go. 
Fourth and about a foot to go and call it the 37-yard line. Fourth and about a foot. Ed Godzak going back in de- defensive safety. So here is the question. Texas has the ball. They have it in Tennessee territory on the Tennessee 37. They lead two to nothing. Will they kick and play the safe game, or will they gamble and go for the foot on the 37? They're going into deep front formation. Gil Dawson standing on his, or rather on the Tennessee 47. Godzak is back in safety for Tennessee. However, the play goes to the short man up the middle, and they move it down there for the first down. To the 45-yard line, T. Jones took the ball. Barbish and Muller, the linebackers, converged. However, he took it, carried it in there to the 35-yard line, and that's a first down for Texas. Texas gambling as they snapped the ball to the short man and carried it down there for the first down, and so they have it first and 10 on the Tennessee 35. Tennessee has had the ball offensively for only one play in this entire first quarter. They fumble on that in the end zone, and that was the safety, and we have three minutes and 37 seconds remaining to be played in the first period. Texas in the tee now. T. Jones gets the ball. Goes to the left. Hands the ball off to give Dawson. Dawson moves across the 35 down to the 33. Doug Atkins in to make the tackle. It's going to be second down and eight yards to go. Doug Atkins, who played in this Cotton Bowl game against Texas two years ago as a defensive end. The amazing thing about him is the fact that he is six feet six inches tall, weighs 240, and high jumps six feet six inches on the track team. Second and eight for Texas. The ball on the Tennessee 33. The Longhorns have been great offensively. Here in the first quarter, here in T formation, Jones gets the ball this time. Here's the pitch out. Going wide is Dawson looking downfield for receiver. The pass or run, he throws. It is incomplete on the 18. Intended downfield for Tom Stolhansky, Jerry Hyde, covering defensively for Tennessee, along with Hugh Garner. So it's going to be third and eight for Texas as they have the ball on the 33. Tom Stolhansky, Texas great offensive end, downfield. And Gib Dawson running to his right. He's the left halfback. Looked downfield, through the pass. It was the optional pass or run. So it is third and eight. Texas with the ball on the Tennessee 33-yard line. Gil Dawson, virtually a unanimous choice for all conference for the second straight season. As a junior, he led the conference in scoring with 62 points. This year, he got 71. Didn't lead the league because his teammate, Billy Quinn, got 78. T. Jones gets the ball now. Fading back, looks for a receiver. Can't find one. He's thrown on the 45-yard line. Snowed under. Francis Holohan and Andy Myers. In the spill, T. Jones on the Tennessee 45-yard line. So it is a loss of 12 yards on the play, and it's going to be fourth and 20. Fourth down and 20 yards to go, and Ed Godzak is going back into defensive safety for Tennessee. Ed Godzak at Roster of a Township High School in Pennsylvania was a teammate of Bert Retchishar, Tennessee's former captain and now star of the Cleveland Browns. When Bert Retchishar came to Tennessee, Godzak went into the Marines. When he got out, Retchishar was through, but on Retchishar's advice, Godzak came to Tennessee as a freshman playing safety. Dawson's in deep punt formation. Boots the ball out of the air. Gets a good roll as it hits on the 25 and bounds out of bounds. Somewhere between the 20 and 25-yard line. However, there is a flag. Check it. There is no flag. It is simply the official marking the ball out of bounds. It's going to be brought in, put in play. Tennessee will have the ball first and 10, and they'll have it on their own 24-yard line. First and ten for the Volunteers of Tennessee as they have had the ball only one play offensively in this quarter. They fumbled for the safety that time. We have two minutes, nine seconds remaining to be played in the first period. Texas leading by a score of two to nothing over Tennessee. First and ten for the Volunteers. Jimmy Wade is the tailback in for Tennessee. Ray Bird at uh, fullback. They're the deep men. Here's a snap. It's second this time by Bird. Hits in there. Fumble. Texas recovers on the 22. The ball was snapped to Ray Bird, the fullback, hitting in there on the Buck Lateral series. He bobbled the ball, and Texas has recovered. Clifford Polk of Hanley, Texas, was the man on the ball. Clifford Polk has recovered. Texas has it first and ten on the Tennessee 22. And so the Volunteers have had the ball on two offensive plays in this quarter. They have fumbled both times, once for a safety, and Texas has recovered now on the 22. The Longhorns out of the huddle now and up to the line. Moving into T formation. In under there is T. Jones, the quarterback. Calling starting signal. Tennessee in the 7 uh, 6 2 2 1. Here's a handoff going to Dick Ochoa. Moves up the middle to the 18 yard line. Push back there. Francis Holohan and Andy Myers in there to push him back as he moved across the 20 yard line and inside. The ball is placed on his near the 19. Call it again to three. So it's second down, seven yards to go. Second and seven for the Texas Longhorns. And they have the ball on the Tennessee 19 yard line. Texas 2 and Tennessee nothing. Tennessee coming into this ballgame, the nation's number one defensive team. Texas coming into this ballgame, having set a new offensive record in the Southwest Conference. Up there, set to go now. Second and seven on the Tennessee 19. Texas in possession. T. Jones looking around. Calls starting signals. Gets the ball. Goes to the left this time. Gives the ball off. It is going to give Dawson. He moves across and uh, gets down to about the 18 and possibly the 17. 
Francis Holohan into spilling. As they get him unstacked, we'll spot the ball exactly on about the 17-yard line. Call it again at two, so it's going to be third down and five. Third down and five for the Longhorns of Texas, and they held the ball on the Tennessee 17-yard line. Third and five for Texas. The sun shining in the Cotton Bowl. 75,504 fans. Tennessee and Texas. Both teams having gone undefeated in their respective conferences. Here's Dawson. Flanked out 10 short outside the left end. T. Jones gets the ball now. Looks for a receiver. He's going to run it. Can't go. And he's hit at the line of scrimmage. Might have picked up a yard. Andy Myers and Francis Holohan, the two defensive guards, playing in there closely. Drag him down. Here was the play. Dawson, the flanker, went across about four, four yards. Stopped there. T. Jones looked for his spot pass receiver. Didn't find him. Decided to run it. And uh, picked up. Well, call it no gain, so it's going to be fourth and five as the ball is on the 17-yard line. Might have lost a yard on the play. And now uh, Texas is calling for timeout. Texas is calling for timeout. When plays resume, they'll have it fourth and fifth on their own, or rather on the Tennessee 17, and here is Bob Murphy. All right, Lindsay. Well, the first quarter is almost run out, too. There's just a matter of seconds here before the first quarter is over in this Cotton Bowl contest. You know, friends, in 1953, you can own the world's only multi-wave radio at new low cost. Yes, Philco presents a brand new 1953 Philco radio model. Uh, full powerhouse reception, full Philco special service band, full price, only $24.95. So why settle for an ordinary radio today? Now it costs so little to own a Philco with the added special service band. Tune in the frequencies of ships at sea, planes in the air, civil defense, the amateurs, and many more. Get fascinating reception no other home receiver can give you. Own the newest 1953 Philco Multiwave Radio now for only $24.95. See your Philco dealer tomorrow for the latest, lowest cost multiwave radio from Philco, world's largest radio and television manufacturer. Well, as we look at the big clock down here in the far end of the field, there's only 18 seconds uh, yet to play, unofficially, that is, in this first quarter of the Cotton Bowl contest. The Texas team is up to the line here again as Lindsey Nelson. Fourth and five for Texas on the Tennessee 17. They're up there in T formation. Here's a handoff going to Quinn, going wide to his left, running along the 18 to the 15, and going on down to the 11-yard line. Hugh Garner up to spill Billy Quinn as he carried the ball right down to the 11-yard line. Four seconds remaining to be played in the first quarter. It's a first down for Texas. Two seconds, one second, and there is the end of the first quarter. The clock has run out. A ball is carried right down to the 11-yard line. It's a first down for Texas. However, the quarter has ended. They'll bring the ball all the way back up to the other end of the field now. And here once again to give you some of his impressions of this great Cotton Bowl classic, here's Bob Murphy. All right, Lindsay, and now while we have this uh, brief interval here between quarters, we pause briefly 10 seconds for station identification. We're speaking to you again from the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas, at the University of Texas and the University of Tennessee. The first quarter just finished in what has really been a thrilling football game here. Uh, Tennessee uh, being driven back and back, but uh, Texas not being quite able to take advantage of the opportunities so far that have been offered to them. However, the ball now rests in about the 11-yard line. Texas has been playing heads-up ball and very strong offensive ball, as uh, was previously expected of this fine Longhorn team, the champions of the Southwest Conference. Down here to our left now, the play resumes, and here again is Lindsey Nelson. Texas with a flanker. It's Billy Quinn outside the right end. Here's the ball now, and the handoff goes to Dick Cho up the middle and moves inside the five-yard line. Pulled up on the four. Pull a hand and Myers came in to spill him as he's piled up right there near the four-yard line. As they get him unstacked, we'll spot the ball exactly for you. Perhaps it's near the five as they pick him off one by one. Call it the five-yard line. Gain of six on the play, so it's going to be second down. Four yards to go for a first down. Five yards to go for a touchdown. Texas leading by a score of two to nothing, and the Longhorns are driving. Moving now out of the huddle and up the line. Tennessee has moved the defense in now. Under there is T. Jones. They're in the T formation. Here's the handoff to Ochoa. Five dives in there for a gain of a yard. Andy Myers came in to spill him on the four-yard line. So it is a gain of a yard. Third down. Three to go for a first down. Four to go for a touchdown. Tennessee, of course, pulling the defense in. And now trainer Mickey O'Brien of Tennessee is racing onto the field as apparently a Tennessee man has been shaken up on the play. A Tennessee man shaken up on the play, and trainer Mickey O'Brien has rushed onto the field. It is Bill Barbish, I believe. Bill Barbish of Cleveland, Ohio, a linebacker, has been shaken up, and trainer Mickey O'Brien of Tennessee has come onto the field, and so time has been taken out here. When play is resumed, Tennessee will have the ball third down. The, uh, correction, Texas will have the ball third down. 
three yards to go for a first down, four to go for a touchdown. Texas leads two to nothing. The sun's still shining here at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas, as the Texas Longhorns have had the ball uh, for all except two plays in this entire ball game. Barbie, she's up on his feet now, getting a hand from the crowd as uh, he is walking around now. He's on his feet. Mickey O'Brien standing there talking to him. Moose Barbish, the Tennessee boys call him. And he's going to stay in the ball game. Barbish is staying in the ball game. And so trainer Mickey O'Brien runs off the field and will be set to go momentarily. Third down and three yards to go for Texas, and they held the ball on the Tennessee four yard line. This ball game brought to you by Philco for 1953, presenting the lowest price fully automatic clock radio in Philco history. The Longhorns driving for Pater now. Move up there in T formation. Tennessee moving the defense in close. T. Jones calling the starting signal. Gets the ball. Here is the handoff. It is going to Dawson wide. Across the five. Into the end zone for the touchdown. The handoff was fake to Dick Ochoa up the middle. Instead, he went to the left half. That Gib Dawson, who swept wide to his right, carried it for the four yards, running for the cotton corner. He was in there for the TD. And now it's going to be Bunny Andrews holding the ball on the extra point, and Gib Dawson will try. Gib Dawson, the Texas jack of all trades, he converted 26 of 30 extra points attempted during the regular season. He tried three field goals this year, made all three of them. Bunny Andrews of Dallas, Texas, who makes a specialty of holding that ball down on one knee on the nine. Hands out stretch. Here's Dawson's boot. It's up. It's good. A kick is good, and Texas leads by a score of 9 to nothing. and here's Bob Murphy. Well, that's a pretty commanding lead, at least for the moment, Lindsay. Those extra three points, uh, uh, two points, I should say, on that safety might conceivably make a great difference because it does mean that uh, a touchdown won't do it now. They need two. Of course, uh, as uh, Lindsay has pointed out here, uh, this is a very odd circumstance here. This Tennessee team has only had the ball for two running offensive plays, and both of them ended rather disastrously for the Volunteers. Philco Corporation, world's largest radio and television manufacturers, bringing you this game, and here's Lindsay again. Well, the ball, the ball went up into the crowd. They won't return it, and now the officials are standing there pleading with the crowd to return the football. The uproar you hear from the crowd, and now a policeman is climbing up to go up after the football. The crowd is booing him. He is making his way up the aisle. He's outnumbered, that's all we can say. The official standing there, and here comes the ball back into the arena. It just misses, as a matter of fact, falls into the front rows. And momentarily, we expect to have a football to play once again. The teams are lined up. They're simply waiting for the ball, and here they come now. The extra point boot by Gib Dawson going high up into the stands, and the fans decided that a la Major League Baseball, they'd keep it for a souvenir. It'll be Tennessee kicking off now, and Texas will receive. The Volunteers get their choice, and they have chosen, because of the win here, to kick off. And kicking is going to be Adams. I uh, check it. Check it. It's going to be Texas kicking off and Tennessee receiving. Hub Ingram will kick off. Hub Ingram will kick off. Now check that. It is England moving over now to kick. England comes forward. Toe meets the ball. A low sailor going all the way into the end zone and out of the end zone. Blocking downfield, continuing. However, it's an automatic touchback and will be brought out to the 20-yard line. We'll recap that one for you since there was confusion. Kicking off was Ken Anglin of Texas. It was a low boot that sailed completely into the end zone. A low liner that hit one time in the end zone and scooted right on out. So Tennessee takes up a first and ten on their own 20-yard line. Tennessee has had the ball on two plays offensively this afternoon. They have fumbled both times. Once for a safety and again... Texas recovered and set up their touchdown. Second quarter of the ball game. Texas 9, Tennessee nothing. Jimmy Wade is the tailback in for Tennessee. Bird is the fullback. Here's the ball going to Wade. Cuts off, tackle, sweeps wide to the left, trying to go outside in. Can't go, and he's thrown out of bounds for a loss of a yard. Marvin Leith of Henderson, Texas, in to make the tackle as he ran Wade out of bounds on the 19, so it's going to be second down and 11 yards to go for the Volunteers, and they have the ball on their own 19-yard line. Texas 9, Tennessee nothing. Second quarter of the ball game. The Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas. This broadcast of the Cotton Bowl game for Philco is being heard coast to coast over NBC and around the world while men and women overseas through the facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Tennessee in a single wing. On the wing is Ed Morgan. Hal Herbert is the blocking back. Bird is the fullback. And on the tailback is Wade. The ball goes to Bird. Hits in. Can't go. Picks up one yard. And he's piled under on the 20. Petrovich came in to spill him on the 20-yard line. 
Charles Petrovich, 6'1", 205-pounder from Palestine, Texas. Filled him on the 20, so it's third down and 10 for the Vols, and they held the ball on their own 20-yard line. That was the first gain of the day for the Volunteers as they picked up one yard. Now they snap out of the huddle and up the line. Third and 10 on their own 20 into a single-wing formation. Jimmy Wade is the tailback. Ray Bird, the fullback. Here is the snap. Goes to Wade. He fumbles. Picks it up on the 10. He can't go, and he's thrown on the 11-yard line. Bill Georges and Carlton Massey and this Bill Wade on the 11-yard line as he fumbled it. And Pat Shires is coming into the ballgame for Tennessee. Pat Shires is coming into the ballgame for Tennessee. And it's going to be fourth down and 19 to go. The Vols have the ball on their own 11-yard line. Shires, the kicker, is coming into the ballgame. He is a brother of former Tennessee All-American Abe Shires, former tackle for the Volunteers in the late 30s, who is here in the crowd this afternoon. When players resume, Tennessee will have the ball fourth and 19. They'll have it on their own 11-yard line. Texas leading by a score of 9 to nothing in the ballgame. And uh, what do you think about the situation, Mr. Murphy? It's uh, like a pretty rough afternoon up to this point for the Volunteers, all right, Lindsay. Uh, this Texas team is certainly up, and, uh, well, they might be because in 51 they had the ball game in the bag, as you uh, fans of these uh, uh, two teams might well remember. And in just the last minute of play, it was stolen right from under the Longhorns' nose by these boys from Tennessee. They won the game 20-14 to 14, uh, when uh, the lads from Texas had, had a two-touchdown lead on them in that 51 meeting. This is the first time again that uh, two teams have repeated here in the Cotton Bowl. And up to the line again comes Tennessee, and here's Lindsey Nelson. Shires back in deep punt formation, standing on his old goal line. Parkinson and Bob Raley are back in double safety for Texas, standing near the Tennessee 45. The snap from center, and Shires gets to kick away a high spiraling booming kick that's coming out, taken on the Texas 49, and it is uh, Raley who is filled all the way back in the 46. Wig Campbell downfield to make the tackle as Raley spilled him. However, there is a flag on the play. There is a flag on the play. Bob Raley took Shire's kick. And it is a clipping penalty, I believe, against Texas. A clipping penalty against Texas. And if it is accepted by Tennessee, it'll be marked off from the 49-yard line of Texas, which is the spot of the foul. The official standing there now talking to the t- Tennessee captain. Here's the penalty. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 yards. Clipping. A clipping penalty against Texas. And that moves the ball to the Texas 34-yard line where it will be first down and 10 yards to go. First and 10 on the kick. The penalty is set in the spot of the foul, which was the 49. However, it is first and 10 as the six are moved back there to the 34-yard line. Texas up there now in T formation. 6 2 2 one defense for Tennessee. In and under is T. Jones, the quarterback for Texas. Texas leading 9 nothing. Here's the handoff goes to Dick Ochoa. Hits up the middle, moves across the 35 down to the 37-yard line. Bob Fisher and Francis Hullahan in to make the tackle as Dick Ochoa carried to the 37 again at 3 yards. It's going to be second down at 7 yards to go. Second and 7 for the Longhorns of Texas. They have the ball on their own 37-yard line. Second quarter, 12 minutes, 37 seconds remaining to be played in the second period. As always, there will be a tremendous halftime show, and we'll have halftime guests here in the Philco booth. T. Jones, under now, calling starting signal, gets the ball, goes to his right, hands the ball off to the right halfback. Billy Quinn breaks through across the 40, down to the 45, and on up to the 48-yard line. There's a fumble there, a big pileup on the 48, and they're getting him unstuck. Billy Quinn carried the ball up to the Texas 48-yard line. However, there is a big pileup, and Tennessee is recovered. Tennessee has recovered Billy Quinn's fumble on the Texas 48-yard line. So now the Volunteers will have the ball. It is being placed down. It's Jerry Hyde, the man who recovered. It is being placed down now near the 50. So to start this series of downs, let's call it the 50-yard line. They finally got him unstuck. It was right there near the 50, just inside. Jerry Hyde was the man who recovered the fumble. Billy Quinn did the fumbling. And now Pat Shires is in a tailback for Tennessee. First and 10 for the Volunteers. They have the ball on the 50. Moving into single wing formation. Shire is back and Bird is in close. Here's the ball taken by Shire. Spading looking for a receiver. Can't find him and he's being thrown on his own 44 yard line. Pat Shire is looking for Vic Kalinick who was far downfield. Couldn't find him. Was thrown on his own 44 as Clifford Polk came in to make the tackle. Clifford Polk from Hanley, Texas came in to make the tackle and Tennessee is calling timeout. Well, it's a six on the play, so it's going to be second down, 16 yards to go in players' room. And again, the Volunteers are calling for timeout, and it's time in for Bob Murphy. 
A spectacular new Philco clock radio at a sensational new low price. That's the New Year's news your Philco dealer has for you, friends. For 1953, Philco presents the lowest priced fully automatic clock radio with timed appliance outlet. The price? Just $29.95. That's full price for this brand new fully automatic Philco clock radio. Go to sleep and wake up to music. Let your Philco turn on the television set, the coffee percolator, the baby's bottle warmer, or any other appliance. Get that famous Philco powerhouse reception, too, all at the history-making low price of $29.95. Been wondering what to do with that Christmas cash? Well, here's a great gift for you at a price that's mighty pleasant. Get the new 1953 Philco clock radio. It's fully automatic as a timed appliance outlet costs only $29.95 from Philco. Here's Lindsay Nelson. Second and 16 for Tennessee. They have the ball on their own 44. Shires is deep now. Instead, he hands the ball off to Bird. He hits up to his own 49. On the tailback, fullback, reverse series. The ball has been moved up by the fullback, Ray Bird, to the 49. Petrovich and Polk in to make the tackle. Here's a score at the end of the first period. Mississippi 7, Georgia Tech nothing in the Sugar Bowl. Arthur. Ball is moved back to the 49, so it's going to be third down now and 11 yards to go for Tennessee. Third and 11, they have the ball on their own 49. Texas leading by a score of 9 to nothing. And this, the second period, 11 minutes, 12 seconds remaining to be played. Tennessee up there, single wing formation. It's Morgan on the wing, Herbert the blocking back. Bird is the fullback, and Shires is deep. The ball is taken by Shires, standing in there, spinning out on the naked reverse to the left. Can't go, and he's still back on the 43-yard line. Shires took the ball on the reverse pivot. He came out running to the left to the weak side. No blockers out there, and he's filled on the 43. Jim Rosser, Pod Price, and to make the tackle on the 43. So it's a loss of six, and it's going to be fourth down now and 17. Fourth and 17 for Tennessee, and they have the ball on their own 43. Moving back in double safety now for Texas is Rayleigh and Ingram. Rayleigh and Ingram are back in double safety as Pat Shires goes into deep punt formation for Tennessee. Standing on his own 31, Rayleigh and Ingram are on their 20-yard line. Shires gets the boot away, a short high boot that is coming over to the right side of the field, hitting on the 36, bounding out of the 30, on down to the 35. They're going to let it go, and it's rolling down to the 21, and finally drops dead on the 20-yard line. John Michaels and Wade Campbell standing over the ball as he dropped dead on the 20, so it'll be first down and 10 yards to go now for Texas. The Longhorns will have the ball on their own 20-yard line. Texas leading by a score of 9 to nothing in this Cotton Bowl game. Brought to you by Philco for 1953. New colors, new models, new values, and the world's only multi-wave radios with special service band. Up there, set to go now, the Texas Longhorns. T. Jones calls starting signals. Gets the ball, slides to his right, hands it off to Billy Quinn, the right halfback. Hits in, picked up a couple of yards to the 22. Francis Holohan came in to make the tackle, so it's going to be second down and eight yards to go. Second and eight for Texas, and they have the ball on their own 22-yard line. They lead in the ball game by a score of nine to nothing. The offensive backfield for Texas, T. Jones, Gib Dawson, Dick Ochoa, and Billy Quinn, one of the finest quartets ever to perform in the Southwest Conference, as they have demonstrated amply here this afternoon. Here's the ball now. Going this time to give Dawson the left half back. Cuts across the 25 and moves the ball on across to the 27-yard line before Doug Adkins came in his spilling. Again, at five yards, it's going to be third and three. Third down and three yards to go for Texas. The Longhorns wearing orange jerseys. Tennessee wearing white jerseys this afternoon. In 1935, Tennessee wore white jerseys throughout the season. They won four games. They lost five. They have worn orange until this afternoon. Third and three for Texas on their own 27. This time, the ball is going to fullback. Dick Ochoa cuts across, gets to the 28. He's thrown back there by Roger Rotroff in Cincinnati, Ohio. Thrown back on the 28. So it's going to be fourth down and two for the Longhorns. And I believe they're sending in their kicking team now. Texas getting set to boot that ball out of there. Fourth and two on their own 28. And they're leading by nine points. Ed Godzak, the freshman, will go back in defensive safety for Tennessee. This is a charge timeout against Texas. A charge timeout as they got the kicker in there. General Bob Nealon of Tennessee sitting across the way on the bench in his overcoat. Farmer Johnson and Harvey Robinson, assistant coaches, up and along the sideline. Back in deep punt formation now is Bob Rayleigh to kick from his own 15-yard line. Godzak of Tennessee is on his own 30. Here's the pass from Sunday. Godzak boots it out of there. A high kick that is coming right down and hitting on the 31. Bounds back to the 25. They're going to let it go, and it is being down on the 23-yard line of Tennessee. So the Volunteers will take over first and ten, and they'll have the ball on their own 25-yard line as it's finally brought into the inbounds marker. Call it the 25. 
So Tennessee, with the ball first and ten, their own 25. A Tennessee man was shaken up back downfield, and trainer Mickey O'Brien has come out of the field to lead him off. Tennessee man shaken up at the line of scrimmage, and it is Hugh Garner. Hugh Garner was shaken up down there near the line of scrimmage. He's being led off under his own power by Mickey O'Brien. So Tennessee has the ball offensively, first and ten on their own 25. Pat Shires is the tailback. Ray Bird is the fullback. Hal Herbert at blocking back, and Ed Morgan is on the wing. The Volunteers running from a balanced line, single wing formation. Starting signals call now. Texas in there playing an 8-3. Ball is taken by Shires. The penalty flag on the play. Shires can't get rid of it. It's being thrown back on the 16-yard line. Bill Georges came in to spill him on his own 16. However, there's a penalty flag back at the line of scrimmage. Shires looked for a receiver downfield. It was Tex Davis. For whom he was looking, he didn't find him and was thrown by a host of orange jerseys. However, back at the line of scrimmage, there is a penalty. It is against Texas. Texas offsides on the play. Doubtless Tennessee would accept this one. Here's the penalty. One, two, three, four, five yards against Tennessee. Offsides against Texas. The ball moves up to 30. It's first down and five yards to go. First and five for the Vols. They have the ball on their own 30-yard line. Texas nine. Tennessee nothing. Eight minutes, 36 seconds remaining to be played in this, the second quarter of the ball game being played in the sunshine before 75,000 fans in the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas. Tennessee snapping out of the huddle, up to the line. Shires is deep, and Ray Bird is the fullback. Texas now playing a 5-3. Here's the ball to Bird, the fullback. Moves up the middle, gets across the 30, down to the 32-yard line. Charles Petrovich and Marvin Lee then to make the tackle on the 32. So it's going to be second down, and three yards to go for Tennessee. Needless to say, the Vols have not picked up a first down in this ballgame this afternoon. Had the ball only two plays offensively in the first quarter. Fumble both times, one for a safety and the other to set up a touchdown. Second and three now for Tennessee, and they have the ball on their own 32-yard line. Single wing, formation right, Thomas line. Texas moving back now into that seven diamond defense as they've been shifting it. Shires is back. Bird is in close. Shires gets the ball. Fakes goes to the weak side, looks downfield for receiver, throws a long one. That is... Incomplete and knocked out of bounds on the 44-yard line. Tex Davis, the man for whom it was intended. Paul Parkinson, the defensive safety for Texas, batted it out of bounds. So it's going to be third and three for Tennessee on their own 32. Jarrett's pitching for Tex Davis. He's a native of Texas, played at Paris Junior College in Paris, Texas. Came here to the Cotton Bowl two years ago. He saw the ball game. He saw Tennessee beat Texas. He went home with them. He went to Knoxville. He became a regular on the Tennessee team. He is back here in the Cotton Bowl, Dallas, Texas, his home state, again this afternoon. Third and three now for Tennessee, and they have the ball on their own 32-yard line. Paul Parkinson, playing defensive safety, was injured earlier in the, the year, and Bill White had finished the season as defensive safety. This afternoon, Parkinson from Baytown, back in there. Okay, Tennessee now, up there in single wing. Formation right. Pat Shires is the tailback. Gets the ball this time. He's handing it off to fullback Ray Bird. Can't go. He's thrown for a loss back in the 25-yard line. Carlton Massey, the man who got him by one foot, back on the 25-yard line. Bird tried to get up and run. However, he had been down there, and it's a loss of seven yards. So it's going to be fourth down and ten yards to go. You know, coming into this game this afternoon, Tennessee was the number one defensive team in the nation. However, Texas has looked great on defense this afternoon. Texas has had a great defense, and they've had an equally great offense. Back in deep punt formation now. It's Pat Shires to boot from his own 14. Bob Rayleigh back in single safety for Texas on his own 36-yard line. Hands out stretch. Shires waits on his own 14. Gets the snap from center. Boots it out. Coming up across the 50-yard line. Hitting on the 47, across the 45. It's taken on the 40 as a fumble. Tennessee recovers on the 35-yard line of Texas. <laughs> Paul Parkinson took the ball on the 40, was hit immediately right there. There was a fumble. Ushery made the tackle. John Michaels recovered the ball for Tennessee. And the Vols take over first and 10. They have the ball on the Texas 36-yard line. So Tennessee, for the first time this afternoon, is in Texas territory. They have the ball first and 10. They have it on the Texas 36. John Michaels was the man who recovered the fumble. Tennessee is calling timeout. And now a few appropriate comments from Bob Murphy. Well, this is a hard tackling, uh, hard blocking football game, as you can see. The, uh, the, the tackling on the part of the Texas team has really been terrific here. And uh, Tennessee, with that strong defensive record, is certainly showing now what they've been doing all season, especially on that last play there. Philco Corporation is bringing you this, the broadcast of the 1953 Cotton Bowl Classic from Dallas, Texas. A new value for the new year, too, from Philco. At your Philco dealer soon, see America's lowest-priced, fully automatic Philco quality clock radio with a timed appliance outlet. The price is only $29.95. Yes, for 1953, Philco brings you the greatest value yet in a clock radio. Fully automatic, lets you go to sleep and wake up to music. 
turns your TV set on and off or any other appliance. Powerhouse Philco Reception, too, yet the price is only $29.95, the lowest price in Philco history for a fully automatic clock radio with a timed appliance outlet. Visit your Philco dealer tomorrow, friends. See how little of your Christmas cash it will take to own this top-performing clock radio. It makes its bow for 1953 for $29.95 at your Philco dealers. And here again comes Tennessee, and here's Lindsey Nelson. Tennessee, first and ten on the Texas 36. Jimmy Wade is in a tailback now for the Volunteers. Starting signals being called. The ball goes and set on the Buck Lateral Series to the fullback. It is Ray Bird hitting into the line, moves across the 35 and down to the 34-yard line. Jim Rosser came in to make the tackle. Jim Rosser came in to make the tackle for Texas as the ball moved to the 34. Again, a two yards on the play, so it's second down and eight yards to go. Second and eight now. Second down and eight for Tennessee, and they have the ball on the 34-yard line. It is Schwanger in at fullback for Tennessee. Schwanger is the fullback, and Wade is the tailback. He has the snap taken this time by Wade. Penalty flag goes down. Wade can't get away, and he's thrown back on the 43-yard line. Penalty flags all over the field. Jimmy Wade attempting to go to his left, hit by Don Miller and Harley Sewell. Harley Sewell, Texas great All-American. Wade couldn't go and was thrown for a loss. And now captains are being called up for a consultation. The line of scrimmage was the 34-yard line. Wade took the ball and was hit back on the 44, his own 44. It would be a loss of about 10 yards. Tennessee was offside, and the penalty has been refused. Let's check it. Check it. Offsetting penalties. Offsetting penalties. There is no penalty as both teams were offside, so the ball is being placed down again. And it's going to be second down and eight yards to go for Tennessee. Second and eight. The down remains the same as both teams were offsides, offsetting penalties. Tennessee now. Single wing to the right. Swing to the fullback. And he goes instead to Jimmy Wade. Cuts up the middle. Gets across the 30. Down to the 25. Down to the 20. Down to the 19-yard line. Carlton Massey finally pulled Jimmy Wade down as he took the ball. A half spinner. He faked the ball to the fullback. Cut right up the middle and moved the ball down to the 19-yard line. And it's the first time this afternoon the Tennessee fans on the far side of the field have had a chance to cheer. Colin Monroe and Williams in there offensively now for Tennessee at tackles. First and ten for the Volunteers. And they held the ball on the 19-yard line of Texas. Texas leading by a score of 9 to nothing. Six minutes, three seconds remaining to be played in the first half of the ball game. Ted Schwanger, the fullback. He's a freshman. Jimmy Wade, the tailback. Here they are in and under now. Starting signal is being called. It is taken this time by Jimmy Wade. Cuts off tackle to the right. Picked up about one yard as the Texas defense came in to smother him on the 18. Hugh Reeder on the bottom of the stack. And Harley Sewell also in there. So it's going to be second down and nine yards to go. Jimmy Wade, the tailback, who just made the longest game of the day for Tennessee, is the man who was the star of the Tennessee-Alabama game. He's a sophomore. was used last year exclusively as a defensive safety man. was used this year as an offensive man. And here's a penalty against Tennessee. A penalty of 15 yards. Illegal use of hands and arms against Tennessee. Illegal use of hands and arms. He's going to move the ball back to the 32-yard line. The down will remain the same. First down for Tennessee as it is on the 32-yard line. First down and about 24 yards to go for Tennessee as they have the ball on the Texas 32-yard line. Single wing, formation right, balance line, seven diamond defense for Texas. Jimmy Wade, the deep man for Tennessee. Ted Schwanger at the fullback. Schwanger gets it. Spinning, he hands it up to Wade. Wade looks downfield for receiver. Throws out to the right. It is incomplete. Batted down on the five-yard line. Intended for Vic Kalinick. Paul Parkinson, the man who batted it down. So it's going to be second down. And 24 yards to go. For Tennessee as they have the ball on the Texas 32. You know, both of these teams have had a host of outstanding stars in past years. Texas All-Americans have been Malcolm Cutner, Chal Daniel, Joe Parker, Herb Bechtold, Bobby Lane, Dick Harris, Bud McFadden, Don Manasco, Bobby Dillon, Harley Sewell, Tom Stilhansky, great ball players who have gone before at the University of Texas. Pat Shires is now coming to the ball game at tailback for Tennessee. Jimmy Wade is out. Pat Shires is in at tailback for Tennessee, and they're going formation left. Second and 24 for Tennessee on the Texas 32. Formation left for the first time this afternoon. All the second this time by Shires. Fading, can't find a receiver, being thrown for a loss all the way back in his own 45-yard line. Harley Sewell. Throwing Shires on the Texas 45-yard line. Harley Sewell, Bill Georges, in to smother him. As that is a loss of about 13 yards on the play. 
And it's going to be third and about 37. Shires took the ball, stepped back a couple of paces to look for a receiver, and was smothered. Tex Davis was the man downfield, would have been the primary receiver. However, he was smothered by Harley Sewell, who came through there to smother Shires, as the Texas line has been doing this afternoon. Third and 37 on the long run, 45 for Tennessee. Single wing formation right. Ball is taken by Shires, running to his right, looks for a receiver, can't find it again. He's smothered back at his own 47 yard line. Bill Georges, the man under spill him. The referee picks the ball up, places it on the 48. Vic Kalinick would have been the man downfield. However, Shires didn't have a chance to see him as the orange jerseys of Texas came into Smother Shires. A loss of seven more yards. So it's going to be now fourth and 44 for Tennessee as the Texas long runs have driven them steadily back and Pat Shires goes into deep punt formation. Bob Rayleigh in single safety for Texas on his own 14. Shires kicking from his own 39. Hands out stretch. Gets the snap. Boots it out of there. Coming down the middle, Rayleigh signals for a fair catch and takes it on the 21. So Texas will take over first and 10 on the Texas 21 as Bob Rayleigh signaled for the fair catch and took the ball right there. The Orange Bowl at Miami, Florida at the end of the first quarter, Alabama 7, Syracuse 6. And this ball game at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas leading Tennessee by a score of 9 to nothing with 4 minutes, 15 seconds remaining to be played in the first half. Here is Texas moving up there. NC formation. T. Jones, the quarterback. Calling starting signals. Gets the ball this time, and it's going to Dick Ochoa up the middle, out across the 25 to 30, and up to the 34 yard line. Bill Barbage finally pulled Ochoa down. As he raced right up the middle, the ball is being placed back on the 32, and there's a penalty flag on the play. A penalty flag on the play at the 25 yard line. Illegal use of hands and arms against Texas. So that game will be nullified. Dick Ochoa moving the ball right up the middle. However, it's a penalty against Texas. Assessed in the 25, it's a 15-yard penalty for illegal use of hands and arms, and that's going to put the ball back on the 10-yard line. So the ball goes back to the 10-yard line, making it an overall loss of 11 yards. So it's going to be first down and 21. The down remains the same. The penalty assessed in the spot of the foul, which was the 25. Minus coming was the 21, an overall loss of 11 yards. So call it first and 21 on the Texas 10. Texas leading by a score of 9 to nothing in this, the second quarter. Here's a flanker, Billy Quinn, split five yards outside the right end. T. Jones gets the ball. It's going to give Dawson wide to the right. Gets across the 10, running along the 12, gets away from the tackle there, across the 15. Finally spilled on about the 18-yard line. Bob Fisher finally spilled him outside, out of bounds on the far side of the field. It's brought into the inbounds marker, 53 feet, 4 inches from the far side of the field, put down to the 18-yard line. Bobby Bringle is coming to defensive safety now for Tennessee. Bobby Bringle is in at safety. Ed Gadzak is out. Gain of eight yards on the play, so it's going to be second down and 13 for Texas, and they have the ball on their own 18. Three minutes, 43 seconds remaining to be played. And this, the first half, we'll have halftime guests on a tremendous halftime show here. Texas up there. Set to go now. Here's the ball, and it is going to T. Jones. He fakes, throws a long pass out to the left, and it is in. England's complete. Incomplete on the 48-yard line. Bobby Bringle had the ball in his hands, dropped it. Gilmer Spring picked it up on the first bounce. However, it goes incomplete, so it's going to be third down now and 13 for Texas. A long pass. T. Jones faking beautifully to Ochoa, who went up the middle, went back to throw up to the 48. So now it's going to be third and 13 for Texas. They have sent in the kicking team, meaning they're going to play it safe as they have the ball on their own 18-yard line. They have a nine-point lead. We are late in the first half of the ball game. Paul Parkinson is in defensive safety for... Uh, check it. Check it. Going back to kick is Bob Rayleigh for Texas, and in single safety for Tennessee is Bobby Bringle. Rayleigh's going to kick from his own five. Bringle's on his own 40. Hands out stretch now. Bob Rayleigh for Texas. Gets the ball. Boots it out of there. A high booming kick that comes across the 50. Hits on the Tennessee 40. Is bounding along the sidelines and out of bounds right near the 40-yard line. And as the ball is brought into the inbounds marker, in order that our stations across this nation and around the world may properly identify themselves, we pause 10 seconds for station identification. Tennessee with the ball, first and 10 on their own 40-yard line. We have three minutes, 35 seconds remaining to be played in the first half of the ball game. Texas leading by a score of 9 to nothing. Tennessee moving into formation left. The tailback is Jimmy Wade. The fullback is Ted Schwanger. On the wing is Ed Morgan. Al Hubbard is the blocking back. Here's the snap now. It's taken by Schwanger. Spins, hits into the line, moves across the 40, builds his way on up at the 45 and all the way to the 50, down to the 49-yard line of Texas. 
Ted Schwanger, the freshman fullback, pulling his way across the 50 to the 49 for a first down for Tennessee. Bob Raley coming up with Paul Parkinson to make the tackle. So it is first and ten for the Volunteers. That's Ted Schwanger, six feet two inches tall, 185 pounder from Sandusky, Ohio. A freshman fullback moved the ball inside Texas territory. That's the first time Tennessee has moved the ball inside Texas territory under their own power. They recovered a fumble there. But this is the first time they've carried it across. Formation left once again. Jimmy Wade is the tailback. Schwanger the fullback. Spinning. It is uh, Schwanger handing to Wade. He can't go, and he's thrown for a loss back in his own 46. Carlton Massey spilled him back there along with Clifford Pope. It's put down on the 45, so it's a loss of six yards. It's going to be second down at 16. Second and 16 for Tennessee, and the Volunteers have the ball on their own 45. As that Texas defense came sifting through once again. Schwanger spinning. Handed the ball off to the tailback, Jimmy Wade. The Tennessee ends are John Tex Davis and Vic Kalinick, the backs Red Morgan, Hal Hubbard, Ted Schwanger, and Jimmy Wade. Texas now on a seven diamond. Linebacker standing in to make it an 8 3. Ball well, is snapped this time to Wade, cuts up the middle, spinning, gets up to the 50, and is finally brought down by a host of tacklers on the 50 yard line. Price and Sewell leading the pack. So it's going to be now third down and 11 yards to go for Tennessee as they have the ball back to the 50 yard line. The Texas defense this afternoon has been nothing short of phenomenal. And of course, their offense early in the ball game was moving steadily downfield. They lead by a score of nine to nothing. With one minute, 51 seconds remaining to be played in the first half of the ball game. Single wing formation right for Tennessee. Texas now shifting one line back outside the left end. Here's the ball snap. It is a reverse to Morgan. A fumble back near the 40-yard line, but there's a handkerchief on the play. The penalty flag is down. The penalty flag is down as it was the reverse to Morgan. He was thrown back on his own 41-yard line. And now the officials checking once again. The ball is placed down there. Here are offsetting penalties. Illegal position or procedure for Tennessee, which means that they pull too quickly on the reverse play. And for Texas offsides, they are offsetting penalties, so the ball goes back to the 50. Third and 11, and Pat Shires has come in for Tennessee along with Ray Bird. Shires in at tailback for Tennessee. Bird is in at pullback now. Third and 11, offsetting penalties on the last play. Texas offside, Tennessee illegal position or procedure, and Tennessee goes into deep punt formation. On third down, Shires is on his own 39. Texas sending Rayleigh back in single safety. Shires boots a high spiraling kick. Rayleigh signals for a fair catch on the 15. Or rather signals a man away, I suppose. Let's it go, and it's bounding down to the 10-yard line. It is rolling, and he's going to drop dead on the 9-yard line. Rayleigh was waving, and we thought he was signaling for a fair catch. Or he was waving a teammate away from the ball. He let it hit. And it went down to the nine-yard line. John Michaels and Earl Campbell were down covering. So Texas will have the ball first and ten. They'll have it on their own nine-yard line. Rayleigh, with his hand up in the air, was uh, signaling and apparently was waving a teammate away from the ball, meaning uh, don't take it, let it go. And so it went down to the nine-yard line where Texas has the ball. One minute, 23 seconds to play. And this the first half of the game. Texas leading by a score of nine to nothing. Now the Longhorns going to deep punt formation. Standing back in the end zone is Gib Dawson. Godzak is in single safety for Tennessee. However, the ball goes up close to uh, T. Jones. He is handing it off to Billy Quinn. Quinn hits it to the line and moves it up to the 14-yard line. Holohan came in to spill him. Again, a five yards on the play, so it's second and five. Second and five for Texas as the ball went to T. Jones, the quarterback. He went right, slid down the line, handed it off to Quinn. Billy Quinn hit into the line to pick up five yards. Earlier in this ball game, Tennessee, uh, Texas, similarly, in deep punt formation, Used the quarterback, T. Jones, hitting in there himself to pick up a vital first down. 33 seconds, and this may be the last play of the first half coming up. Second and five for Texas. They have the ball on their own 14. The Longhorns up there now in T formation. T. Jones, the quarterback, takes a look around. Still calling starting signals. A high count. Gets it this time. He's handing it off to Ochoa. Moving up the middle across the 20-yard line. Still going down the 25 the 26-yard line. Jerry Hyde came in to spill him. Ochoa moving in there across the 25 and up to the 26. It's a first down for Texas. First and 10, they held the ball on their own 26. And now Texas is calling time to stop the clock. We have eight seconds remaining to be played in the first half. Texas is called time, so it's time out for Texas, time in for Bob Murphy. All right, Lindsay, 1953 is going to bring brand new experience for music lovers, made possible by a triumph of tonal research in the Philco Laboratories. Philco has perfected the true harmonic reproducer, and it's yours now in the new low-cost Philco table radio phonograph. 
The True Harmonic Reproducer is a special phonograph pickup that reproduces the full range of harmonics for the first time. It reproduces the character of every instrument, every voice, brings you record reproduction never before achieved on a table radio phonograph. It's yours for 1953 in Philco's table radio phonograph that also plays all records automatically. You'll enjoy Philco's far advanced multi-wave radio top and its special service band, too. So see your Philco dealer tomorrow for a thrilling demonstration of the world's only table radio phonograph. All right, Lindsay, last play of the half. First and ten for Texas on their own 26. Jones gets the ball, fading back now, looking for a receiver, and he's going to run it. He's up to the 25, still hard on the 26-yard line. One second to play in the first half, and there is the end of the first half. Gene Muller came in to make the last tackle as T. Jones ran it out to the 26, just at the end of the first half of the ball game. And so the score at the end of the first half, as the teams leave the field, is Texas 9, Tennessee nothing. There'll be a tremendous halftime show. We'll have guests here in the booth to tell you all about that. Here's Bob Murphy. Bob? All right, Lindsay, and a wonderful first half. Lindsay Nelson. Well, that's the story, as uh, Lindsay mentioned just a few seconds ago. It's 9 to nothing, and Texas, the team that had victory stolen right from beneath its grasp here two years ago in the last minute of play against this selfsame Tennessee team, uh, came on very strong here in the first half, completely dominated the first quarter, and uh, although Tennessee did come back to life in the second quarter, came through with a 9 to nothing lead. Gib Dawson scoring from a few yards out on a run around uh, right end for the touchdown. The point was kicked, and of course, uh, Tennessee was caught in their own end zone. During time, uh, a tremendous. We went over yesterday afternoon to Dow High Stadium and watched these uh, youngsters who are now down here on all sides of the stadium. They're uh, college girls and high school boys and girls from all parts of the state of Texas. Uh, they won their right to come here to the Cotton Bowl and perform today by dint of very, very uh, serious and strenuous co uh, contests. There are five bands and the Rangerettes, uh, 55 young ladies from Kilgore College in Kilgore, Texas. Uh, the bands who won the right to come to the Cotton Bowl this year and were informed uh, several months ago and have been rehearsing very hard ever since that time is a band from Pine Tree High School in Gregston, Texas. Mr. Ed Lumpkin is the director of that group. The band from Robert E. Lee High School, uh, Baytown, Texas, down on the Gulf Coast. J.C. Burkett is the director, and they're coming into position down here right now. Uh, San Angelo High School Band of San Angelo, Texas. Uh, Homer Anderson is the director of this group. The Hooks High School Band from Hooks, Texas. Norman White, director. Uh, Lubbock High School's band is uh, down here in the Cotton Bowl this year. Paul Branham is the director of that group. And the Ranger Band from Kilgore College, Kilgore, Texas, Major H.L. Walker is the director. And those Rangerettes that we told you about. Uh, Fifty-five young ladies from Kilgore College down Kilgore, Texas. They uh, right now are arranging themselves down here in various musical groups. They're going to give us a little uh, a little music lesson down here, we're told. The color is really beautiful to see because they all have uh, different colored uniforms, and there are literally uh, several thousand of these youngsters. They have now formed down here a musical staff with the treble clef, and uh, the public address announcer is saying this is a whole note, and they play the whole note. Now, a whole group is moving down the musical staff, and they're going to play the tone D. Here they come again, moving down in their black and uh, yellow uniforms. The band plays the note C. Now they're going back to join with their fellows, half of whom were on the far side of the stadium. You must understand that the diagrams for all of this were uh, made up months ago. We're told that uh, this halftime entertainment here today actually is costing about $1,000 a minute. And these youngsters have put in really thousands of man hours of work to make this wonderful display for the people here in the Cotton Bowl today. Now the two groups forming two notes are moving down to play two more notes. Playing three blind mice is what they played very slowly, and now they're playing it. 
And the announcer says that now you can read music. And really, it was a very uh, graphic illustration, too. Well, the show uh, goes on down here uh, in the Cotton Bowl. Uh, believe me, it is a colorful exhibition. And as I mentioned at the outset here of the halftime, uh, one of the features of the Cotton Bowl, the entertainment at halftime, is one of the big things. And uh, in spite of the wonderful ball games they have here in the Cotton Bowl, the fans really go for this, too. Sitting alongside of me here right now is a gentleman who has been covering Cotton Bowl games, I guess, ever since they started. Isn't that right, Bill? Well, I've been uh, either here or uh, close by, I'll say. Yeah, either here or close by. I'm talking about Bill Reeves, uh, who is the sports editor of the Dallas Morning News and is also the president of the American Football Writers Association of America. How long do you hold a job like that, Bill? Well, Bob, usually they throw you out after one year. They... They catch on to you within the space of a year, you see, and then they, then they throw you out. Mm -hmm. Are you a little happier at halftime? Well, of course, at halftime two years ago, we were pretty happy here in Texas. Yes, that's too. right. I'm sitting next to a, a newspaper man down there in the lower level of the press box from Austin, and he's, uh, he's very, still very nervous. He says, I remember two years ago, so I'm not uh, comfortable yet. Well, there's no doubt about it. This Tennessee team certainly has more both on offense and defense than they uh, showed here in the first half. Well, I think so. However, I do believe that the uh, Texas defense has been... Uh, Underrated. There's been so much talk about their offense, and they have a, a, a very fine defense, actually, and which they certainly are showing today. I wrote down the name of that one end here who went right over the guy who was going to block him. What was his name? And, and, uh, and the Georges. I think I, you yeah. about Georges. Bill Georges. He was yes. blind, but he didn't stop. He went right over the that's top. Right. Went over two of them and, and got the man. And uh, that's the sort of thing that's been going on all, all afternoon. This first half, and it's really paying dividends. Uh, it's rather unusual. It's uh, Reversal, I believe, of the usual procedure. Uh, Tennessee usually capitalizes on breaks, and uh, in the first half, uh, Texas uh, capitalized on a Tennessee mistake to score its touchdown. You're not kidding. Listen, now, how, uh, how long have you been with the uh, Dallas News? Uh, since the war, Bob, I used to be with the Associated Press. So oh, yeah. Before that, always in Texas. Mm -hmm. Listen, uh, uh, how many of you fellows belong to the Football Writers Association? Oh, it's uh, quite a large group. We have uh, several hundred uh, members from all over the United States. It's a very large group. Our uh, big meeting uh, where we elect officers is at the All-Star Game in Chicago every uh, oh, yeah. August. I imagine in a state like Texas here, where you're working for one of the big metropolitan newspapers, and you have a lot of colleges that have a lot of good football teams, uh, it's your job in the fall is pretty busy one, isn't it? Oh, yes, it is, uh, Bob. We really go strong for the football down here, and, it's, uh, of course, it's... Uh, Sort of a, it's a headache in one regard and a, a great love in the other. Oh, they love it. There's no doubt about that. Listen, Ed Price has uh, set himself quite a record uh, down here, Bill. What does it look like next year for the Longhorns? Well, I think they're going to be uh, hurt considerably. It looks uh, right now like uh, SMU and uh, Baylor and Rice are going to be the uh, three teams that we're going to have to flip a coin over. Pretty hard to stay topside in this league for too long, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's very unusual for a team to do what Texas has done. They've uh, gone undefeated now in the conference in two of the last three seasons, and that is uh, a record in itself uh, with the conference as it's presently constituted. Mm -hmm. Very remarkable feat. Price has done a wonderful job down there. Bill, we sure appreciate you coming over here. I guess you, you just walked over, though, didn't you? Or did you walk up? I just walked up. Oh, fine. We sure appreciate you walking up, and thanks an awful lot right, for thank being you here today. Bill Reeves, the president of the Football Writers Association of America and sports editor of the Dallas Morning News, and certainly an interested observer here today. Say, folks, here's the big announcement of the new year in electronics for the home. For 1953, uh, three, Philco introduces the most advanced television receivers ever offered the American public. There's new improved uh, Golden Grid television, new amazing all-channel UHF television, too, and a new lower price. Yes, in 1953, America's most wanted television can be yours at new low cost in a brand-new Philco Golden Grid receiver with 21-inch picture. It's a true Philco high-fidelity set with true Golden Grid tuner, and it's available with the Golden Grid tandem tuner, too, for all-channel UHF. It has Philco's exclusive electronic built-in aerial for UHF and VHF, yet the price is lower. Yes, for 1953, your Philco dealer will soon be showing the most advanced performance and the greatest values ever seen in television. Brand new from Philco, world's largest radio and television manufacturer. Here's a gentleman sitting here who's not quite as happy, I don't imagine, uh, with what's gone uh, here in the first half of this game between Texas and Tennessee. He's a sports editor of the uh, Knoxville News Sentinel, and right there on the home base of the Volunteers uh, School, Bob Wilson is his name. Hi, Bob. Fine, thank you, uh, Bob. Uh, 
I, all I can say right now is that uh, I'm not so very happy. I'm a little bit dis- disappointed up to this stage. Well, I just said to Bill Reeves here that a team like Tennessee that uh, had a fine season in spite of uh, a little trouble along the way certainly hasn't shown uh, what it has in this first half. They certainly haven't. They've shown a lot of jittery. They've been very jittery in this first half, and uh, that's not the lack of Tennessee team, except uh, last year. They, they got jittery in the uh, Sugar Bowl, you know, and they lost that ball game because they were jittery. Mm-hmm. Looks like they're going to try to do the same thing here today. Mm-hmm. What was the best game they had this year? Do you remember, Bob? Alabama uh, was the best game that Tennessee played in high pitch. Definitely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, how about this uh, exhibition down here today now? As you say, they've been a little jittery and uh, doing a lot of fumbling. Have they had a game this year where they uh, fumbled as often as they have in this first game? No, no, they haven't. This is the worst fumbling game they've played so far. Oh, yeah. It's uh, worst, uh, It's worse than the uh, Sugar Bowl game last year. Mm-hmm. How long have you been writing for the News uh, Sentinel? I've been writing about 25 years for the News Sentinel in Knoxville. I might say that, that I haven't given up hope, though, Bob. Uh, we still have a, a boy in there that hasn't played yet, uh, Pat O'Rexhack. And I, I believe if Pat can get in there, he may get him rolling. I don't know. They, they, uh, the Texas team has played a remarkable defensive game. Which I wasn't think. expected uh, right. at all. Uh, those big fellows like Sewell and Georges and those fellows are getting through there on our boys before they get started. I don't, I don't know what's happening in there, but uh, I hope it changes in the second half. <laughs> he sure do. How many uh, of these teams were you here, I suppose, two years ago, were you? That's right. Mm-hmm. And, of course, that would probably be the only time you'd have gotten to the Cotton Bowl in the town of Tennessee. That's right. I've been with Tennessee most every year. But uh, it was quite different out here that day, you know. Yes, uh, well, it wasn't so different until the last, what was it, about the last minute, That's wasn't right, it? the last uh, half. Uh, and they say watch Tennessee in the second half today. I hope they uh, watch them and see them go very strong that second half. Well, I think your your friend from uh, Dallas here, Bill Reeves, he certainly agrees. They haven't, uh, somebody's going to get a little talking to, I imagine, down there in the basement, huh? Well, nine points is, is a good lead, all right, but it's not uh, typically to overcome, and Tennessee gets in there and hits the... Uh, a couple of good runs or kind a couple of, an awkward, of prices. Kind of an awkward lead to overcome. That's right. It's, uh, here's, get two touchdowns. here's a score. The man who reports uh, Southeast Conference would certainly be interested in uh, Bob uh, Wilson. First half at New Orleans down in the Sugar Bowl. Mississippi 7, Georgia Tech 10. Well, uh, I figured Georgia Tech would take him about two touchdowns. We well, did. Uh, well, they were... Mississippi had a very good ball club and was capable of coming back there and upset them. Mm-hmm. Well, it certainly looks like a good ball game over there. Oh, it does, yeah. Well, we had wonderful weather and uh, nice of you to come on up here today and say hello to all your friends down in Tennessee, Bob. Well, I hope I have something more to tell them uh, in the paper than I have right <laughs> now. Tell them on the radio. Thank you very much, Bob. Okay, Bob. Bob Wilson, the sports editor of the uh, Knoxville News Sentinel and certainly an interested observer here this afternoon. Say, we got some statistics here. Um, these official or unofficial, Woody? Uh, unofficial statistics. Uh, first downs, Tennessee 2, uh, Texas 9. The uh, rushing yards uh, net for Tennessee, well, certainly tells the story of what's been going on here. Uh, from scrimmage, Tennessee has lost 23 yards in the first half of this Cotton Bowl game here in Dallas today, whereas Texas gained 125 yards. The passing yardage net... Uh, nothing for Tennessee. Uh, Pat Shires has been having some real trouble there because those Texas linemen have been seeping through and smearing him before he could get rid of the ball. So they've gained no yardage uh, through the air, and Texas has gained only a net of nine yards through the air. Passes attempted, two for Tennessee and Texas four. Uh, completions, uh, none for Tennessee, and Texas completed one out of four. Uh, own passes intercepted, uh, neither for either team. Punts, 5 for Tennessee and 4 for Texas. The average on punting, 37 yards for Tennessee and 36 for Texas. Uh, Yards penalized, 20 for Tennessee and 30 for Texas. Uh, The uh, leading ground gainer for Tennessee is Schwanger, who gained 12 yards in two attempts. Leading uh, ground gainer for Texas is Ochoa, who gained 59 yards in 13 attempts and has really been driving after he's been hit out there today. The leading passer, well, there's none uh, none completed out there, or one out of four, so there, there hasn't been much choice there. Uh, that is in the Tennessee side. The leading passer for Texas is Jones. Uh, T. Jones who completed uh, one out of two that he threw himself for nine yards. Well, that's the story of the, uh, of the first half here, in statistics at least, uh, of the Cotton Bowl Classic from Dallas, Texas, the University of Texas, and the Volunteers from Tennessee. And down on the field here, and by the way, there's not a cloud in the sky now as that weather uh, moves uh, 
from the uh, north over here and has uh, completely blown away the clouds that, uh, frankly, had this uh, sort of an overcast day when uh, we came out here earlier today. But just as the starting whistle blew, the clouds all uh, uh, started to disperse, and uh, about halfway through this first half, they had completely gone, and we have a cloudless sky over the uh, Cotton Bowl here this afternoon. Uh, down on the field, these wonderful youngsters from all over the state of Texas are going through their maneuvers now. The Rangerettes, the young college girls that I uh, mentioned at the outset, from Kilgore College here in Texas are now marching off the field in the massed bands. Five high school bands from various parts of the state of Texas. Uh, one dressed in uh, bright uh, blue, blue trousers, blue coats. One band over here on the far left dressed in royal blue coats with gray trousers with a very trim stripe going down the side. And blue hats with a... Uh, the big uh, red plume coming up from them. Very, very colorful. They're now uh, forming uh, five figures out here on the field. Understand, all of this was well rehearsed, of course, at the, in their uh, native towns long before they ever came up here to Dallas. And then they rehearsed uh, several days over here at the Dallas uh, High School uh, Stadium, which, by the way, is uh, quite a stadium itself. They have a beautiful stadium over there. Now the band down there is uh, giving us a little masked music, and uh, this part of the program, from what I saw yesterday, is very musical. So, Don, let's go down here and pick up a little bit of that. of this uh, halftime uh, musical demonstration down here by these five high school bands from various parts of Texas and the Rangerettes is Music in America. And uh, you just heard the popular tune that they just played here a moment ago. They're now forming into another group here. A grand piano is forming down in front of us. And I believe at this juncture they're going to play uh, the famous uh, Gershwin number, the Rhapsody in Blue. They're all uh, forming. The Rangerettes are coming in with their red blouses and blue skirts, white belts at the waist, and the typical uh, real light Texas hats. And here's the music, some Gershwin music from down on the field. bands disperse again. The grand piano that was formed by the group from the Robert E. Lee High School down in Baytown, Texas, has now spread out into a great, uh, a great wide semicircle here in front, surrounded by bands. And here's another Gershwin tune. I got rhythm with some of the, the whole Rangerettes out there, and believe me, the Rockettes could well take a lesson from this group. Let's listen to the music.
Well, Texas can certainly be proud of these young people here. And the mass bands disappear from the center of the field, and on the uh, field again we see the Texas boys coming down the sidelines here. A great show at the halftime at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas. Here's a score from the Gator Bowl. Jacksonville, Florida. The University of Florida, 7. Tulsa University, uh, nothing. That's in the first period. Philco Corporation is bringing you this broadcast of the Cotton Bowl Classic from Dallas. And friends, the secret is out with this special Cotton Bowl announcement for January 1st, 1953. Tomorrow at your Philco dealers, a brand new 1953 Philco Golden Grid television receiver makes its debut and at a new low price. Philco has advanced the frontiers of television science again. New developments, new advances now bring you the television that's number one in public demand at a value price never before equal. It's a big 21-inch Philco Golden Grid television tuner. This Philco picture is 20 square inches bigger than others advertised at the same size. You also get Philco's exclusive electronic and directional built-in aerial for both UHF and VHF. Yet your Philco dealer can now announce a new low price. So start 1953 with the greatest television ever offered the American public. See, compare, and own this great new Philco Golden Grid receiver at record low cost at your Philco dealers now. Well, the teams are coming back on the field here at the uh, Cotton Bowl in Dallas. The score is Texas 9, Tennessee nothing as we're about to begin the first half. We pause now briefly, 10 seconds, for station identification. This is Bob Murphy speaking to you from the Cotton Bowl Stadium in Dallas, Texas. The teams have come back on the field uh, over on the far side there in their unfamiliar white jerseys, the Volunteers from Tennessee, and right down below us, the uh, Longhorns from the University of Texas, who are now leading 9 to nothing as this second half of the Cotton Bowl Classic for 1953 is just about to begin. The sky is as sunny. The uh, between halves show was uh, really a beautiful thing to behold down below here. It's a wonderful day in Dallas. Folks have come from uh, all parts of the country, not to mention uh, Tennessee, believe me, because they were certainly here in special trains for the last two days. By the way, I noticed uh, one of the Dallas newspapers was publishing a special department of Tennessee news here as a feature and a courtesy to the visitors from Tennessee. And now out on the field, uh, they come again, the Longhorns and the Volunteers. And here again is Lindsey Nelson to bring you the play-by-play -play account of the second half. Lindsey? All right, Bob, and to kick off here for Tennessee, it's going to be Ralph Adams as the Volunteers will kick off and defend the south goal. Texas will receive and defend the north goal. Cameron and Pace will be the two deep men for Texas. Adams to kick off for Tennessee in the first half. Tennessee picked up two first downs. Texas got nine net yards rushing. Tennessee had a minus 23, and Texas had 125. Waiting now for the kickoff of the second half. Texas leading 9 to nothing. Here comes Adams forward. He's told me it's about it to Sailor. Hitting on the 17. Bounding all the way back to the 7. Taken there by Cameron. He's back to the 10, 15, 20, 25. And it's filled on the 27-yard line. John Michaels, Bill Cameron on the 27. And so now the Texas Longhorns take over. First and 10, they have the ball on their own 27-yard line. Second half getting underway at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas. We were to have had Andy Kozar on the air here at the halftime. However, Andy went to the dressing room with the Tennessee Volunteers at halftime. Didn't get up here to the broadcast booth. His ball club trailing. He was in there with them. First and ten now for Texas, and they held the ball on their own 27-yard line. Doug Adkins, coming all the way back up the field, had been far downfield, and uh, just now is coming into the ball game. And another Tennessee man coming onto the field. That is Darius McCord, who is coming onto the field now. The Volunteers getting their defense set. Referee Alvin Bell moves away from the ball. Texas up there in T formation. Same backfield they had in the first half. T. Jones is the man in there. Waiting now for the snap as he looks around. Running it up to a high account. He spins. Hands the ball off. The play goes up the middle. It's Ochoa carrying and he moves it across the 30 down to the 35 yard line. Bill Barbies came in to spill him as Dick Ochoa. A powerhouse runner of the University of Texas Longhorns. Moved the ball up to the 35. Again, eight yards on the play. So it's second down and two. Second and two for Texas, and they have the ball on their own 35. Dick Ochoa, one of Texas tri-captains, called by many of the outstanding back in the Southwest Conference. He was the leading ball carrier in the conference with 819 yards and 194 carries. Here is a flanker, Billy Quinn, split out 10 yards to the right. Play instead is going up the middle of Ochoa. He gets across the 35 and on up to the 38 or 9-yard line. Francis Holohan and Andy Myers, and it's him a first down for Texas. First down for the Longhorns as they held the ball on their own 38-yard line. 
And the Texas Longhorns have begun here in the second half just as they played throughout the first half. The only surprising thing about Texas' performance in the first half, according to pregame Duff, was the fact that they showed such a sterling defense. It was well known that they were one of the great offensive teams, but their defense was somewhat of a surprise. T. Jones is under now, gets the ball. This time the handoff is going to Billy Quinn, goes wide to his left, and is finally spilled on the 34-yard line. Roger Rottroff got him by one foot, tipped him back in the 34-yard line. So it's going to go as a loss of four. Second down and 14 yards to go for Texas. They have the ball on their own 34-yard line. Rottroff, a defensive end for Tennessee, 5'10", 185 from Cincinnati. Speaking of Ochoa, as we were a moment ago, he started against Tennessee two years ago as a defensive halfback. He is now known as Mr. First Down for obvious reasons. Second and 14 for Texas on their own 34. Jones sliding down the line. Here's the pitch out. It is going to Dawson looking downfield for a receiver. Jumps into the air, throws. Incomplete out of bounds and over in front of the Texas bench. Dawson throwing downfield. It was intended downfield for Billy Quinn. But when incomplete, as it was thrown out of bounds, so it's got to be third and 14 now for Texas, and they have the ball still on their own 34-yard line. Our spotters this afternoon for the University of Texas, Jack Kites, and for the University of Tennessee, Julian Andes, both doing a swell job. Texas now sending the kicking team in, as apparently they're going to boot it out of there on third down. Bob Raley is the man who will do the booting. Ed Godzak is back in single safety for Tennessee. Got Zach, 5'10", 175 pounder from Webster, Pennsylvania. Here is Rayleigh back in deep front formation on his own 22. Got Zach is on his own 34. Hands out stretch now. Rayleigh waits for the snap, gets it a perfect pass from center, boots the ball away. A high kick that is floating across midfield, across the 40, taken by Godzak on the 35, and he's still back on the 29 yard line. Probably will be put down about the 31. He fumbled the ball away, however, the whistle had blown. He was hit down there by Hugh Reeder. And the ball is being placed down on the 31-yard line. So Tennessee will take over. First and 10. Godzak took the ball about the 35. Was finally uh, driven all the way back to the 31. And finally was hit down on the 29. Fumbled. However, the whistle had blown. And it's in play on the 31. All right, Tennessee. Set to go. Jimmy Wade, the tailback. Ray Bird is the fullback. Single wing. Formation right. Ball is taken this time by Jimmy... Uh, Wade, the tailback, fake to the fullback, hits in there, picks up about two yards to the 33. Clifford Polk and Carlton Massey made the tackle. Second down and eight yards for Tennessee, and they have the ball on their own 33-yard line. In the backfield for Tennessee, Ed Morgan is wing back, Hal Herbert at blocking back, Ray Bird at fullback, and Jimmy Wade at tailback. This is the first single wing team that Texas has met since they met this very same Tennessee team in this Cotton Bowl two years ago. They have met exclusively T formation and split T teams. Southern Methodist does use a wing formation, but against Texas, they use a spread throughout. Here's the ball to the fullback, and it is Bird hitting in there. Across the 35 up to the 36-yard line. The entire center of the Texas line in to make the tackle. The gain of three, so it's going to be third down and five. Third down, five yards to go for Tennessee. They have the ball on their own 36-yard line. Texas leading by a score of nine to nothing. We have 11 minutes, 40 seconds remaining to be played in the third quarter of this game at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas. Defensive signals being called by Jack Barton, one of the tri-captains and defensive right halfback of Texas. Single wing, formation right. Here's the ball going to Bird. He fumbles. There's a pileup. Bird fumble the ball going in. They dribbled it into the line. There is a big pileup. As they get him unstacked, Tennessee is in possession as the ball went up to about the 39-yard line. Again, of three, so it's going to be fourth and two. Pat Shires has come into the ballgame now for Tennessee. Pat Shires has come into the ballgame. It's a charge timeout as they get the kicker into the game. So it is fourth down and two yards to go. Tennessee in the deep punt formation on the 27-yard line. His own 27 is Shires. Bob Raley in defensive safety is back on his own 10. Hands out stretch now. Shires gets the ball. Boots it away. Coming across midfield. It hits on the 29 of Texas. Across the 25. Down to the 20. Still bounding. Down to the 15. Gets a good roll down to the 10. Still going down to the 9. The 8. And is dropping dead on the 7-yard line. John Michaels right over the ball as it dropped dead on the 7. And that is where Tennessee will take over. Correction. Texas will take over. First and 10 on their own 7-yard line. Texas this afternoon wearing orange jerseys, as we've said before, in Tennessee, decked out in white. First and ten for Texas, and they have the ball on their own seven. Texas leading by a score of nine to nothing. Here are the Longhorns, snapping out of the huddle and up the line, moving into T formation. And it is T. Jones who is in there at quarterback. Same backfield it's been in all day long. Tennessee in a 6-2-2-1 defense. 
A handoff goes right to stand to Billy Quinn. Cuts off tackle across the 10. Goes down to the 12, the 13-yard line. Mac Franklin in to make the tackle on the 13, along with Bob Griesbach. So it is a gain of six on the play. It's going to be second and four for the Texans as they have the ball on their own 13-yard line. Texas two years ago in their game against Tennessee used a tight T formation as Blair Cherry was the head coach. Last year, Texas switched to a split T formation under head coach Ed Price, who is completing his second year at the helm. T formation, second and four for Texas on their own 13. Jones gets the ball. He's handing off this time to Dawson. Cuts across the 15. Gets up to the 17-yard line. Doug Atkins in to make the tackle. Very close to a first down for Texas. Referee takes a look over toward the sideline as they get them unstacked. It's going to be third down and about a yard to go. Third and about one as the ball's on about the 16 and a half. Call it third and one on the 16. Texas in possession in their own territory. The sun's still shining as it has been throughout this ball game here this afternoon. Key Jones, the quarterback. Tennessee now on a seven diamond. Here's the handoff going to right half. Billy Quinn cuts across to the 19 for the first down. Mike Franklin in to make the tackle for Tennessee. Billy Quinn carrying to the 19-yard line, and that's a first down for Texas. Longhorns with the ball on their own 19. And remember Philco, Golden Grid Television, now at new, low cost, in a 1953 21-inch receiver. This broadcast of the 1953 Cotton Bowl game brought to you by Philco. T formation, first and ten for the Longhorns on their own 19. Sliding to the left is Jones. He's handing off to fullback Dick Ochoa. Cuts across the 20 and moves down to the 21-yard line. Andy Myers made the tackle on the 21, so it's going to be second down and eight for Texas as they held the ball on their own 21-yard line. Dick Ochoa, the man carrying the ball, has lost only 10 yards in three seasons. Three seasons of varsity play, he has lost only 10 yards. Missed the first down, they call him. Second and eight now for Texas, and they held the ball on their own 21. Texas leading by a score of nine to nothing by virtue of a safety... A touchdown by Gib Dawson, an extra point by Gib Dawson. Billy Quinn, flanked five yards outside the right end, fading his T. Jones, looks for his receiver, throws down the middle, complete up to the 38 to the 40, and down to the 44 yard line is Billy Quinn. T. Jones passing to Billy Quinn, and the ball moves up to the 44 before Gene Moeller finally dragged him down. So it's first down, 10 yards to go for Texas. As the Longhorns, passing from deep in their own territory, have passed to the flanker who was split five yards outside the right end. They moved it up to the 44. Quinn went down about 10 yards, cut over to midfield, took it straight down the middle, so it's first and 10. Here they are, up there once again in T formation. Tennessee with a seven diamond. Waiting is T. Jones, the quarterback, going to a high count. Here's the snap, he slides up, the handoff goes to Gib Dawson, penalty flag goes down, Dawson goes to the 50-yard line, finally brought down by Gene Muller. Gene Muller brought him down on the 50-yard line, however, there's a penalty flag back at the line of scrimmage. Dawson picked up six yards on the play. The official's now checking. And Texas was offsides on the play. Texas offsides on the play, and the Tennessee captain, the defensive captain, is Francis Holohan. Has his choice now. The play is being called back in Texas. Will be assessed five yards from the line of scrimmage, which will carry the ball back to the 39-yard line. The down remains the same. It's first and 15. First and 15 for Texas. They have the ball on their own 39-yard line. Texas 9, Tennessee nothing. The Volunteers having been held scoreless in this ball game Throughout the regular season, Tennessee was held scoreless only one game. That was the Duke game in which the Duke Blue Devils defeated Tennessee by a score of 7 to nothing. Now, it is Gip Dawson splitting 5 yards or 10 yards outside the left end. T. Jones gets the ball this time. Here the handoff goes to Billy Quinn, the right halfback going to his left. Sweeps can't go. Thrown at the line of scrimmage on the 39 by Andy Myers. Andy Myers of Knoxville, Tennessee, through Quinn at the line of scrimmage. So it is second down and 15. Here's a score in the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville, Florida, at the end of the first half. Florida, 14, Tulsa, nothing. Second and 15 for Texas. They have the ball on their own 39. Texas 9, Tennessee nothing. There's a T formation. Tennessee in a 6 2 2 1. May shift one linebacker in. Here's Jones fading back, looking for receiver. Standing on his own 30. Can't get rid of it. Running to his right. Still looking. Finally throws up field, and it is complete up to the 46 yard line. A beautiful catch by Stel Hansky. But the penalty flag has gone down. Hugh Garner was the man right with Stel Hansky. Stel Hansky. He made the grab. The penalty flag is down the 47 yard line, and now. We have the officials checking with the captains once again. Stolhansky and Garner seemingly grab that ball simultaneously. And pass interference is being ruled. And the ball goes up to the 48-yard line for an automatic first down for Texas. 
If pass interference is ruled, it would be automatic. However, that is not. Check it. One of the co-captains comes up to check with the referee. The ball is up to the 48-yard line, and it's going to be second down and about six yards to go. It'll be second and six for Texas as the pass goes complete to Stolhansky from T. Jones up to the 48-yard line. So Texas leads by a score of nine to nothing. They have the ball on their own 48, second and six, and here's Bob Murphy. All right, Lindsay, friends tomorrow for sure. Meet the acknowledged leader in television performance at new low 1953 prices. To start 1953 off with a bang, your Philco dealer is presenting new Philco television with the Golden Grid Tuner. Now you can buy a 21-inch Golden Grid receiver at a price that's actually the lowest in history. That's right, Philco's Golden Grid television, number one in public demand, is now yours at less cost than ever before, thanks to new Philco engineering triumphs. It's a true Golden Grid receiver with the only built-in UHF VHF aerial that's electronic and directional. It's available with Golden Grid Tandem Tuner for all channel UHF reception. It outperforms any other set at any price, friends, yet the price is rock bottom for quality TV. Find out how easy it is now to own one from Philco, world's largest radio and television manufacturer. They're up to the line, and here again is Lindsay Nelson. Second and six for Texas on their own 48, third quarter. Jones gets the ball, hands off up the middle. It's Ochoa, and he is piled up on the 50-yard line. Picked up two yards on the play. Gene Mollick coming to make the tackle. Andy Myers also in there, so it's going to be third down and four for Texas. Third and four. We have six minutes, 38 seconds remaining to be played in the third quarter of this football game. Texas leading by a score of nine to nothing. The Longhorns huddling back on their own 40-yard line. Tennessee has been using primarily a 6-2 and a 7 time and defensively. Here's a flanker split outside the left end. It's Gib Dawson out there five yards. T. Jones takes a look around before leaning in and under to get the hand off from the center. Gets it this time. Here's a handoff going to Ochoa right up the middle, and he goes to the 44-yard line. Hit down by Bob Griesbach, the left linebacker for Tennessee, and it's a first down for Texas. The Longhorns are on the march, and they have it first and 10 on the Tennessee 44-yard line. Texas leading by a score of 9 0. Texas, as you know, lost only two ball games this entire season. They lost one to Notre Dame. They lost one to Oklahoma. Against Notre Dame, Texas played a tremendous game the first half. We're leading Texas, or rather, we're leading Notre Dame. The Irish came back and beat them in the second half. First and 10 on the 44. Here's T. Jones handing off to Gibb Dawson, the left halfback. Gets to the 40, still going down to the 35, and is hit down on the 32 yard line. Francis Hullahan spilled him on the 32. It's another first down for Texas. A Tennessee man shaking up on the play. When play is resumed, it'll be first and ten for Texas. They'll have the ball on the 32. Roger Rottroff is the man who has been shaken up. Roger Rottroff, a defensive end. Mickey O'Brien, the trainer, comes onto the field. So time has been called. When play is resumed, it'll be first and ten for Texas on the Tennessee 32. Texas nine and Tennessee nothing. Well, the uh, second half here begins to look, uh, rather, the, the third period begins to look like the first period again. Uh, Lindsay, Texas is dominating the play here pretty much again. Uh, that boy Dawson is certainly a hard runner. He was hit there uh, easily seven yards before he stopped, and he was hit straight up, straight up, too. But he spun off the man and uh, fell across uh, the 35-yard line uh, down to about 32, 33-yard line there, where he finally was brought to earth. Played a wonderful game. He's the lad, you know, who scored uh, for Texas there on an end sweep, which he outran his man very neatly and uh, really put Texas in a commanding position here uh, as the second quarter was about midway through its uh, the time it uh, ran here this afternoon. The boys are standing down there in the field now. Uh, this uh, Tennessee player who's down on the ground there, Mickey O'Brien's looking at him, helping him to his feet now, and apparently he just had the wind knocked out of him because he's not even going to leave the game. He flexing one leg there as though perhaps he might have bent his knee a little bit suddenly, but he's going to stay in the game. And the trainer is now trotting off the field. Boys are putting their helmets back on. The Texas team goes into his huddle again. The referee walks uh, away from the ball, and play is called in. Up come the Longhorns again. Here's Lindsey Nelson. First and ten for the Longhorns. The ball on the Tennessee 32. T. Jones gets the ball. Slides right this time. Hands off to Billy Quinn. Quinn goes down to the 25 and is finally spilled on the 24-yard line. Andy Myers spilling him on the 24 as Billy Quinn, the right halfback, took the ball and moved it straight off tackle. A split T handoff to the right halfback as T. Jones simply slid down there and handed it off to Billy Quinn, the sophomore sensation of Texas, who moved it down to the 24-yard line. So it's going to be second down now for Texas. Second down and about two to go as they held the ball on the Tennessee 24. 
Up there again, in T formation. Tennessee, our seven diamond defense. Ball is taken this time by Jones, fading back, looking for a receiver. Looks and throws, intended for Dawson, and the deep man in the end zone. Incomplete is Gilmer Spring. An incomplete pass. Dawson went out to the left. Instead, he threw to the deep man, Gilbert Spring, in the end zone. Jerry Hyde and Ed Godzak were covering. It goes as an incompleted forward pass. It's going to be third and two on the 24. Gilmer Spring, deep in the corner. Dawson also in the same zone. As T. Jones took the ball, he faded back, looked and faked to Dawson, the near man, and finally threw to the deep man. So it's third and two, and the ball is on the 24 of Tennessee still in possession. Off Texas with four minutes, 48 seconds, remaining to be played in the third quarter. Here is Gibb Dawson, flank 10 yards outside the left end. Tennessee in a seven diamond. The end split out to cover the flanker. Here is T. Jones carrying straight up the middle. Moves it down to the 22. It's going to be very close to a first down. Myers and Muller in to make the tackle. Wedging him out up the middle was T. Jones, and it's down to the 22. Very close. They may have to measure. They may not. The referee signals a first down for Texas. The referee signals a first down for Texas on the 22. So it's first and 10 for the Longhorns, and they're driving toward Pater, leading by a score of 9 to nothing. This Texas team that went undefeated in Southwestern Conference competition has been a great offensive and defensive team this afternoon. Here they are, up there set to go. Sliding right, and the handoff goes to Billy Quinn. He's hit on the 21. Picked up one yard as Mac Franklin came in to make the tackle. Second down, and nine yards to go. Speaking as we were a moment ago about the fact that Dick Ochoa had lost only ten yards in three seasons, it uh, must be mentioned the fact, of course, that in a split T formation, the handoff takes place at the line of scrimmage, which makes it uh, difficult to lose yardage if the ball is handed off right there, as it usually is. Up there in T formation now, second and nine on the Tennessee 21. T. Jones slides left, gives to Dawson across the 20 down to a 19-yard line, thrown back at the 19. Myers and Fisher. Came to make the tackle as Gibb Dawson, the left halfback here, is placed down near the 20 yard line. So, color again of yard is going to be third down and eight. Third and eight for Texas. And the other one on the Tennessee 20 yard line. Texas nine, Tennessee nothing. Three minutes, 20 seconds remaining to be played in this, the third quarter. Earlier, we were mentioning some of the great Texas players who have gone before. Tennessee All Americans of past years have been Gene McEver, Bobby Dodd, Herman Hickman, Baby Feathers, Bowden Wyatt, George Caffergo, Suffrage, Shires, Fox, Malensky. Huffman, Daffer, Pierman, Laura Sella, Michaels, and Adkins. All the second this time by Jones, fading back, throws. It's here, he's it on the 10. Return to the 15, the 20. And he is finally spilled on the 22-yard line. An intercepted pass, Grease Fock has intercepted and returned to the 23, and Tennessee takes over. Bob Grease Fock, 5'10", 185-pounder from Portsmouth, Virginia, intercepted the pass, and so the threat... Uh, Texas is temporarily averted as the ball is moved out to the 22 and a half. Let's call it the 22. First down and 10 yards to go for Texas. And they held the ball on their own 22-yard line. Bill McDonald, the man who finally dragged him down. Tennessee offensively on their own 22. Moving into a single wing. Pat Shires in there at tailback. Starting signals being called. Instead, it's taken to the fullback. Ray Bird hits him, gets across the 25, up to the 30. Still going and moves down to the 33-yard line. Ray Bird carrying to the 33-yard line. And that's going to be a first down for Tennessee. First down and 10 yards to go as Ray Bird of Knoxville, Tennessee carried. Hugh Reeder and Bill Georges made the tackle. Pat Oleksiak is coming to the ballgame. Pat Oleksiak of Hempstead, Long Island in New York has come into the ballgame at tailback. He's 5'10", 190-pounder. Pat Oleksiak, spelled O-L-E-K-S-I-A-K. Here's the ball to Bird again. Hits in there. Hit at the 34 and hit hard as he picked up one yard. Price, Pod Price from Electra, Texas. Came in to make the tackle. Second down and nine for Tennessee, and they have the ball on their own 34. One minute, 56 seconds remaining to be played. And this is the third quarter of the ballgame. Texas leading by a score of nine to nothing. In the backfield for Tennessee, Pat Olekshack is at tailback. Ray Bird is at fullback. Hal Hubbard is at blocking back, and Ed Morgan is on the wing. Texas now. Jack Martin, the defensive right halfback, calling defensive signals. Texas is moving into a seven diamond. Now they move one linebacker. They move three linebackers out back to make it a 5-3. Here's the ball taken this time. It is handed to Alexiak. Jumps, throws, and it is in. It is complete. Up on the 44-yard line. A beautiful catch by Kalenic. A circus catch by Vic Kalenic up on the 44-yard line of Texas. Bob Rayleigh was covering Kalenic. 
With his hands outstretched, he bobbled away momentarily, held on to it, a beautiful circus catch, and it's a first down for Tennessee in Texas territory as Tennessee is now called timeout. So once again, time in for Bob Murphy. If television's on your mind, here's a cheer for the new year. The television that's number one in public demand is now yours at record low cost. Tomorrow at your Philco dealers, you can see a great new Philco 21-inch receiver with a fabulous golden grid tuner, priced lower than ever before in history. The time has come to treat yourself to the finest, folks, and now it costs less than ever to own unmatched Philco golden grid television. This history-making set has Philco's exclusive built-in UHF, VHF aerial that's directional and electronic. It's available with a built-in, all-channel UHF. See it at your Philco dealers tomorrow. Up to the line again come the volunteers, and here's Lindsey Nelson. Tennessee moving into formation left. First and ten on the Texas 44. Alexiak is at tailback. Bird is at fullback. Here's the ball. Taking the time. It's fumble. Bird tries to pick it up. It is back to the Tennessee 40-yard line, and Texas has recovered. Todd Price has recovered for Texas. Todd Price has recovered on the Tennessee 41-yard line. The snap went back to Bird. He was spinning and trying to hand the ball off to Oleksiak. He and Oleksiak on the fullback, tailback series, spinning. It got away, bobbled all the way back, and Pod Price has recovered for Texas. So now the Longhorns have the ball. First down, 10 yards to go, and they have it on the Tennessee 41-yard line. One minute, four seconds remaining to be played, and this is the third quarter of the ball game. Texas leading by a score of 9 to nothing. The Longhorns up there in T formation. Tennessee in a 6-2-2-1. T. Jones, the quarterback, waiting now for the snap. Gets the ball this time. Hands off Ochoa going up the middle. Moves across the 40 down to the 37-yard line. Hit by Andy Myers. Again, a four yards on the play, so it's going to be second and six. The Texas Longhorns, who lost the ball deep in Tennessee territory by virtue of an interception a moment ago, are driving once again toward the Tennessee goal as they have gotten the ball on a Tennessee fumble. This afternoon, it's been the Texas Longhorns who have been the opportunists as they have taken advantage of Tennessee mistakes and are leading in this ball game by a score of nine to nothing. Time running out in the third period. Possibly this will be the last play of the third quarter. Second and six on the Tennessee 37. Texas in possession. 6 2 2 1 defense for Tennessee. Team formation. Balance line for Texas. Here's the handoff going to Dick Ochoa. Moves across the 35. Down to the 33 yard line. Holohan and Griesbach in to make the tackle. Five seconds remaining to be played in the third quarter. Three seconds, two seconds, one second. And there is the end of the third quarter. The end of the third quarter of the Cotton Bowl game in Dallas, Texas, with a score, Texas 9, Tennessee nothing. All right, Lindsay Nelson, you take a breather now, and there the teams are changing ends of the field. The shadows here, as we look down, are beginning to fall from our side of the field across to the other side as the sun goes a little farther into the western sky. We move into the last quarter of the Cotton Bowl Classic, Tennessee and Texas from the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. The score, Texas 9, Tennessee nothing. And a great football game it has been uh, with the volunteers from Tennessee having an awful lot of trouble today and a lot of bad breaks and hanging onto that ball in instances that certainly turned out to be very decisive. The Cotton Bowl Classic brought to you by Philco Corporation, world's largest radio and television manufacturer. All over America, it's first in public demand, and now, for 1953, it's far ahead in value, too. Brand new 1953 Philco Golden Grid television models are arriving at your Philco dealers right now. They being new standards of television engineering, just like a boost in station power, actually. They bring the exclusive Philco all-channel directional built-in aerial for both UHF and VHF. See them tomorrow. They're back on the line. Here's Lindsey Nelson. Texas set to go. Here's a handoff going to Billy Quinn. He cuts across the 30-yard line and moves down to the 29-yard line, and that'll be enough for a first down. Hugh Garner came up from the secondary to make the tackle. Billy Quinn taking the handoff. Moves the ball across the 30 down to the 29. A first down for Texas. The Longhorns have the ball. First and 10, and they have it on the Tennessee 29. You know, Texas has one of the greatest records of any team in the country in bowl games. In the Sugar Bowl, Texas defeated Alabama. In the Orange Bowl, Texas has defeated Georgia. In the Cotton Bowl, Texas has defeated Georgia Tech, Missouri, and they've tied Randolph Field. Here they are, up there, set to go. First and 10 on the Tennessee 29. Jones with a handoff to Ochoa, straight up the middle. Moves across the 25 and down to the 24-yard line. Francis Holohan and just fill him on the 24. Ochoa, Mr. First Down, has picked up five yards. So it's second and five now for Texas, and they have the ball on the Tennessee 24. The only time that the Longhorns of Texas have ever lost in a bowl game in their entire history was two years ago in this very same Cotton Bowl when they lost to the Tennessee Volunteers. This afternoon, they are coming back to even up the count. They are leading by a score of nine to nothing, and we are in the fourth quarter of this football game. Second and five for Texas, and they're driving on the Tennessee 24. 
Up there in T formation. T. Jones gets the ball. This time he hands off to Gibb Dawson. Cuts around off right tackle. Can't go. Thrown possibly for a loss of a yard as Holahan came in to make the tackle. So it is third down. And six yards to go for Texas as they have the ball on the Tennessee 25-yard line. This broadcast of the Cotton Bowl game brought to you by Philco Corporation presenting Philco Television with the Golden Grit Tandem Tuner for UHF. Nothing matches it. Texas, third and six on the Tennessee 25. Texas, nine. Tennessee, nothing. Here are the Longhorns, snapping out of level and up to the line. Tennessee in the 6 2 2 1 defense. E. Jones, the quarterback for Texas, slides left this time. He's handing off to Dick Ochoa. Gets across to the 24. Picked up one, so it's going to be fourth and five. A fumble, and Tennessee has recovered. A fumble on the 24, and Tennessee has recovered as they get him on stack. Roger Rutroff and Gian Muller on the ball. As they get them up, so it's going to be first and ten for Tennessee, and the ball is spotted near the 25-yard line. Dick Ochoa carrying the ball, fumble. Rotroff and Muller recovered for Tennessee, so it's first and ten for the balls as they held the ball on their own. 25-yard line, 13 minutes, 11 seconds remaining to be played in this ball game. Alex Shack is in at fullback for Tennessee, in at tailback for Tennessee. Ted Schwanger is in at fullback. Here is Alex Shack driving off tackle. He fumbles, and Texas recovers on the 26. <laughs> Pat Oleksiak of Tennessee took the ball, hit off tackle to his right, fumbled, and Texas recovered on the 26. Jim Rosser from Cleveland, Texas, recovered on the 26. So now the Longhorns are back in possession. You know, two years ago in this ball game, Texas was leading. They had the ball. It looked as though they might have the game sewed up. They fumbled, and Tennessee recovered and won the ball game. Well, this afternoon, every time the Tennessee has had the ball and it started to drive, they have fumbled, and it's been Texas that has recovered. First and ten now for Texas. On the Tennessee 26, Jones gets the ball. Hands off to Ochoa. Up the middle across the 20 and down to the 19-yard line. Hugh Garner up in the secondary. Spilled him on the 19. Again, a seven yards on the play. Dick Ochoa, called by many, the outstanding back in the Southwest Conference, has moved the ball down to the 19. Gain a seven yards on the play, so it's second down and three. Second and three for the Texas Longhorns, who lead nine to nothing in this ball game. Twelve minutes, 25 seconds remaining to be played. Ochoa was named to the all-conference team by the coaches. Here's the flanker. Spit three yards outside the right end. It is Billy Quinn. The referee comes in now before they can snap it. The headlinesman also in there. The officials checking. This is an official's timeout, apparently. It is an official's timeout. Alvin Bell, the referee, now moves away from the ball. Says, start the clock rolling. And we're set to go. Second and three on the Tennessee 19. Quinn is the flanker outside the right end. T. Jones gets the ball. Slides left and said, gives it to Dawson. Dawson goes across the 15. Still just inside the 15-yard line by Mike McCruskey. And that's going to be enough for a first down for Texas. First down for the Longhorns on the Tennessee 15. Gib Dawson, the jack of all trades for the Texas Longhorns. Here at the ball for the first down. He is one of two men on this team, this Texas team, who are not from the state of Texas. He is from Douglas, Arizona. First and ten now for the Longhorns. The ball on the Tennessee 15. T. Jones gets the ball, slides left, gets to Dawson. Spinning, he gets to the 10. It's finally dragged down to the 10-yard line. Gene Muller in there to spill him. So it's going to be second down and five yards to go. Gib Dawson carrying right off tackle from his left halfback position. Move the ball up to the 10-yard line. So now the Texas Longhorns are driving, and this is the fourth quarter. No scoring in the third quarter of the ball game. Texas leading at the end of the first half, 9 to nothing. They are leading now by a score of 9 to nothing. We're in the fourth period, but they are driving on the Tennessee 10. They have it second down at five yards to go. Here they come. I don't have to up to the line. Hugh Jones, the quarterback. Gib Dawson, the left half. Dick Ochoa, the fullback, and Dick Quinn is the right half. Here is the handoff. He's going to Ochoa. Hits in there and gets across the five. Piled up right on the five. It may be another first down. Dick Ochoa. Carried to the five-yard line. Bob Greaseback. Dragged him down on the five. It is just short of a first down. So it's going to be third down. About a foot to go for a first down. Five yards to go for a touchdown to the Texas Longhorns. Tennessee now trying to step in the defense. Texas with a great backfield quartet of Jones, Dawson, Ochoa, and Quinn. There they are up there in T formation now. Jones calling the starting signals. Gets the ball. Slides right this time. Here's a handoff. It's going to Quinn. Quinn hits in there. Moves right down to the one-yard line. Quinn is pushed back at the one-yard line. We'll see where the ball's going to be spotted. Ed Godzak. Came up from his defensive safety position to spill him on. It's going to be spotted on the two. It's the first down on the two-yard line. So now the Texas Longhorns have the ball. They have it first down goal to go, and they're on the Tennessee two-yard line. Texas leads by a score of nine to nothing. The Longhorns want to call time and talk it over, and we want to talk it over with Bob Murphy. 
Oh. All right, Lindsay. Well, they're they're really down in the enemy country right now. The Longhorns are on the march again. Philco Corporation, world's largest radio and television manufacturer, bringing you this, the classic from the Cotton Bowl on the first day of 1953. You know, there's never been television performance before to match the new 1953 Philco receivers with Golden Grid Tuner. They're arriving at your Philco dealers now, bringing with them a brand new day in television for both UHF and VHF. Philco with the Golden Grid is just like a boost in station power, adding new miles to television signals. And now the fabulous record of Philco Golden Grid Television is linked to UHF, too. For 1953, Philco brings you the Golden Grid Tandem Tuner for complete coverage of all television channels. Absolutely nothing matches it in all of the 82 television channels. Yes, Philco Golden Grid Television is America's finest. That's why it's number one in public demand all over the country. See your Philco dealer tomorrow. See and compare the spectacular performance and the amazing new values for 1953 from Philco, world's largest radio and television manufacturer. Now, the referee is called time in again. The clock has started. The Longhorns are in the huddle and just about to break. And here again is Lindsey Nelson. Exactly ten minutes left to play in the ball game. Texas has it first down goal to go there on the Tennessee two. They're up there set to go. Now, T. Jones gets the ball. Hands off to Ochoa. Ties. Gets right to the goal line. He's piled up on the goal line. They're getting one sack now. Picking him off. He was thrown back right there at the goal line. Possibly inches short. There's been no signal as yet as the referee. In fact, all the officials are in there. Getting on stack slowly, one by one. Adams, Holohan, Myers, they're all in there. The bottom of the stack. And it is just inches short of the goal line. So it's second down and goal to go. Second down and goal to go for Texas. And they have the ball inches away from that goal line. Second and goal on the six-inch line, we'll call it. Texas leading nine to nothing. They're driving for another touchdown now. Here they move up there in T formation. T Jones is in and under. He gets the ball. This time the handoff goes to Dawson. Gets right to the goal line. He is... In there for the touchdown! The right halfback, Billy Quinn, it was, who carried it in. Right halfback, Billy Quinn, who scored six of Texas' last nine touchdowns during the regular season, carried the ball in there for the TD. The right halfback, Billy Quinn. The prior touchdown was scored by Dawson. This one was scored by Billy Quinn. Now we'll have Dawson trying the extra point. Holding is Bunny Andrews. Kicking is Gib Dawson. Andrews, Gib Dawson had one for one this afternoon, 26 for 30 during the regular season. So he's 27 for 31. The ball is down. The kick is up. It's good. So as they come back up the field, it's Texas 16, Tennessee nothing, and here's Bob Murphy. Well, that uh, really makes it tough for the volunteers. They really have their work cut out for them now. 16 to nothing. The Texas Longhorns roaring back with a vengeance after having that last-minute defeat snatched uh, uh, from their grasp in the last meeting here in 1951 between the Volunteers and the Longhorns, the only two teams who have ever repeated in the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. They're uh, lining up again for the kickoff here now. The Texas fans, of course, on the other side of the field over there have the big signs up spelling out across one whole section, Longhorns. They're naturally very jubilant. Over on the uh, bench on the far side of the field, the uh, volunteers are all standing. The substitutes and coaches are all standing along the sideline uh, trying to get something generated here. It's pretty tough, though, uh, when you, you run up against a team that's playing inspired ball, as Texas certainly is today, and then you yourself, your own lads, are constantly confronted with a series of uh, things that slow down your attack, those uh, costly fumbles that have held the volunteers back all afternoon. Philco Corporation, world's largest radio and television manufacturer, bringing you this, the 1953 broadcast of the Cotton Bowl Classic from the Cotton Bowl here in Dallas, Texas, on a wonderful day. There's nine minutes and 17 seconds left to play in this game, and uh, the volunteers from Tennessee are trailing 16 to nothing. The kickoff uh, after the touchdown again, here again, is Lindsey Nelson. Ken Anglin kicking off for Texas. Started up, uh, the ball rolled off the kicking tee, the wind blew it off the kicking tee, so we have a momentary, uh, momentary delay. Here's a score from the Salad Bowl in Phoenix, Arizona, San Diego Naval Training Station 13, the 101st Airborne Division, nothing. Texas kicking off, Tennessee receiving, fourth quarter of the ball game, Texas 16, Tennessee nothing. Here's angling forward, Comey to ball a long end over end kick, it's sailing right down to the seven yard line, fumble, and recovered on the 15 by Tennessee. Martin recovered on the 15. As Godzak and Martin uh, both tried to make the catch uh, simultaneously, it was bobbled out to the 15. Martin fell on the ball, so it's first and 10 now on the 15, and Tennessee man is shaken up. 
Tennessee man is shaken up on the 35-yard line. And trainer Mickey O'Brien has come onto the field. When play is resumed, Tennessee will have the ball first and ten on their own 15. Two men trying to catch the kickoff simultaneously. They bobbled it up to the 15, where it was finally recovered by Ray Martin. Godzak and Martin were trying to uh, return the kickoff simultaneously. And now, in order that our stations across this nation and around the world may properly identify themselves, we pause ten seconds for station identification. At the world-famous Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas, this is Lindsey Nelson with Bob Murphy. Texas is leading Tennessee by a score of 16 to nothing. The Tennessee men having been shaken up on the kickoff, and when players resume, Tennessee will have the ball deep in their own territory. Texas got out in front early in the ball game when Tennessee, and deep punt formation, bobbled the ball in the end zone, and uh, couldn't get out with it, so Texas went ahead 2 to nothing. Gib Dawson scored later, kicked the extra point. Texas led 9 nothing at the end of the first half. There was no scoring in the third quarter. Billy Quinn, the sensational sophomore halfback, has just uh, scored the last touchdown for Texas, and Dawson has added the extra point. Lamar Leachman was the man who was shaking up. He is up and leaving the field now. Lamar Leachman, 6'1", 190, from Cartersville, Georgia, was the man shaking up on the play. He is leaving the field now. This broadcast brought to you by Philco, and remember Philco Television with the exclusive all-channel directional built-in aerial for both UHF and VHF. Pat Shires in the tailback position. Ted Schwanger in at fullback for Tennessee. The ball is taken this time by Schwanger. Hands off to Shires. Shires running to his right. Looks. Pass is complete to the 21. Down to the 25. And on up to the 30-yard line to Vic Kalinick. Check it to Tex Davis. Tex Davis. And Marvin Leith is the man who finally brought him down. Marvin Leith finally brought him down as... Tex Davis took it and moved it out to the 30-yard line. So it's first and 10 for Tennessee. Pat Shires, the tailback, passing. Texas 16, Tennessee nothing. Here are the volunteers moving into single wing. Formation right, Morgan on the wing. Shires is in the tailback position. Ted Schwanger, the freshman fullback, in closer. Here's a snap taken by Schwanger, spinning hits to the line. Can't go, and he's thrown for a loss on his own 28-yard line. Marvin Leith again through there. Marvin Leith, 6'1", 185-pounder, along with Howard Moon, 6'2", 195-pounder from Houston, Texas. So it's a loss of two. Ted Schwanger carrying on the spinner at second and 12. Fourth quarter, Texas leading, 16 to nothing. Second down, down. Here are the Vols moving this time into formation left. Pat Shire still deep. Schwanger the fullback. Morgan on the wing. Schwanger spinning, handing off to Shire. Goes to his left, looks, throws out to the left, and it is complete up to the 36-yard line. A beautiful catch. A beautiful circus catch by Ed Morgan, the wing back, up on the 36. Jack Barton came in to make the tackle. Wing back Ed Morgan from Hendersonville, North Carolina, made a circus catch up on the 36. So his gain of eight yards on the play is going to be third and four. Jack Barton, one of the tri captains of Texas, and defensive right halfback, who also calls the defensive signals, was the man who hit him. Tennessee still in Tennessee territory. Seven minutes, 32 seconds remaining to be played in the ballgame. Formation right, Shires deep. Morgan on the wing, Schwanger the fullback. Texas shifting into a 7 4. Here is Shires looking. Can't get rid of it being thrown on his own 31-yard line. The orange shirts of Texas again sifting through, led by Don Miller of Port Neches, Texas. The Phil Shires on the 31. Vic Kalinick was downfield, the man who would have been the primary receiver in that pass pattern. All this place down is near the 32, so call it a loss of four. It's going to be fourth down and eight. Fourth and eight for Tennessee, and they have the ball on their own 32-yard line. Pat Shires in there at tailback. Bob Rayleigh goes into single safety for Texas. Back on his own 35. Shires kicking from his own 21. Deep punt formation. Gets the snap from center. Gets the boot away. A high spiraling kick coming across midfield. Rayleigh going back. Takes it on his own 25. Bobbles it on the 24. Has it now up to the 25, the 30. And it's filled on the 34-yard line. Rayleigh returned to his own 34. So it's going to be first and 10. Roger Vest downfield to make the tackle. The offensive center for Tennessee along with John Michael. So it's first and 10. The ball is on the 34-yard line. Texas leading by a score of 16 to nothing. Texas Longhorns huddling near their own 25-yard line. Here they snap out of the huddle and up to the line, moving into T formation. T Jones takes a look around. Tennessee in a 6-2-2-1 defense. 
Here's the ball taken by John. Slides left hands out to give Dawson. Moves across the 35 up to the 36 yard line. Bob Grace back in to make the tackle, so it's going to be second down and eight. Gain of two yards by Gib Dawson. Takes this great left half back. This backfield, of course, of the University of Texas, one of the best balanced backfields in collegiate football. T. Jones, Gib Dawson, Dick Ochoa, and Billy Quinn. Tennessee in a 6 2 2 1. As Texas is up there in T formation, second and eight on their own 36. T. Jones in and under, gets the ball, slides right, hands off to Dick Ochoa. He hits across to the line of scrimmage, gets across to the 37. And Frank McCraskey came in to make the tackle. A pile up there. The referee places it down. It is uh, nearer the 38 yard line. So call it again to two, and it's going to be third down and six. Third and six for Texas, and they have the ball on their own 38 yard line. This is the 17th annual Cotton Bowl game, played in the Cotton Bowl Stadium, which was built in 1930. TCU defeated Mark Cut in the first uh, Cotton Bowl game in 1937. Here's T. Jones sliding right, holds onto the ball, runs it on the option, holds onto it himself, moves out across the 40, down to the 45, and up to the 49 yard line. Ron Gus came in to make the tackle. Ron Gus came in to spill him as T. Jones, running the option to the right, held onto the ball, fell off the end, moved inside and up to the 49-yard line. And that's a first down for Texas. The Longhorns moving. First and 10 on their own 49. Four minutes, 55 seconds left to play in the ballgame. Texas 16, Tennessee nothing. Texas now sending a flanker outside the left end, and that is Billy Quinn, who's coming five yards outside the left end. T. Jones gets the ball, holds on to it, wedges him out, up the middle, across the 50, down to the 49-yard line of Tennessee. Gain of two, Frank McCraskey made the tackle, so it's going to be second down and eight. Second and eight for Texas, and they have the ball on the Tennessee 49-yard line. T. Jones carrying the ball himself. The comeback kid, they call him. T. Jones was the Southwest Conference leading total offense back with 1,299 yards for an average of 6.2 per play. During this season, Texas up there now. Tennessee in a 6 2 2 1. Jones waits. Goes to a high count. He gets the ball, comes left. Hands off right to the line of scrimmage to give Dawson across the 40 and hits down right there at the 40 yard line. Karski in to make the tackle, and that's going to be another first down for Texas. First and 10 for the Longhorns as they move inside Tennessee territory to the 40 yard line. Incidentally, T. Jones, the quarterback who runs the offense, the man in the driver's seat for Texas, has his girlfriend right here at the ball game with him because she is a cheerleader, Marjorie Hargrove, who is right along the sideline. Texas first and ten, they have the ball on the 40-yard line. Coming out is Dick Ochoa. Coming out is Gib Dawson. And listen to the hand they get. Quinn is now coming out of the ball game. Quinn has come out of the ball game, and Larry Graham is in at left half. Doug Cameron is in at fullback. Jimmy Pace is in at left half. For the Texas Longhorns. T. Jones staying in there at quarterback. Larry Graham at left half. He's from Houston, Texas. Doug Cameron from San Saba is in at fullback. And Jimmy Pace from Kennedy, Texas, who started the season as the regular right halfback. In there now. Jones gets the ball, slides left here to handoff. And it's going to Larry Graham, and he moves down to about the 41 yard line. Adams and Hensley in to make the tackle for Tennessee. And Hensley. So it is a loss of about a yard on the play. Second and 11. Second and 11 for Texas. Their backfield, T. Jones, Larry Graham, Doug Cameron, and Jimmy Dan Pace. Texas 16, Tennessee nothing. Three minutes, 17 seconds left to play in the ball game. Texas driving inside Tennessee ter- the territory. They're up there in T formation. Tennessee on a 6-2. Here's the ball taken this time by T. Jones. Fades and looks. Decides to run it. Can't go. Finally breaks away. Gets across the 40, down to the 35. And is finally dragged down on the 32-yard line. Hensley, Gust, and Adams finally brought him down. Jones, who was stopped twice before he finally broke away, carried it down to the 32, and a Tennessee man is shaken up on the play. A Tennessee man shaken up, trainer Mickey O'Brien, coming onto the field once again. Bunny Andrews is coming into the ball game for Texas, and that means that T. Jones will be coming out. Bunny Andrews is coming in. T. Jones comes out. Listen to the hand he gets. Time is out on the field. On the last play, T. Jones carried the ball down to the 32-yard line, picked up nine, so when play is resumed, it'll be third and two. But right now, here's Bob Murphy. Well, there's no doubt at all, Lindsay, why these four lads that are the starters for Texas are all conference here in the Southwest Conference. They certainly all have distinguished themselves at all levels of play today. Uh, really a, a wonderful backfield, and they've played one of the best games, undoubtedly, of the year here today. 
As new as 1953 and number one in public demand, new low price at your Philco dealers beginning tomorrow is Philco's high-fidelity television with the golden grid tuner. Full 21-inch picture at a sensational new low price. See it at your Philco dealers. It's brand new. See it tomorrow. They're up to the line. All right, Lindsay. Next is set to go. Bunny Andrews is in and under. This time the handoff goes to the fullback. Doug Cameron hits in, carries it across the 30, and is piled up right there. Might have picked up enough for a first down. Tom Hensley in to make the tackle. Griesbach also in on the last play. It's a first down for Texas. First down and 10 yards to go, and they have the ball on their 30. And strangely enough, Bunny Andrews, who is in there running the Texas offense now at quarterback, went to school at Woodrow Wilson High School, which can be seen from our Philco broadcasting position here at the Cotton Bowl. Bunny Andrews, very close to home this afternoon, despite the fact that his team is from Austin, Texas. He gets the ball, slides to the right this time, hands it off to Jimmy Dan Pace. He hits across and moves for a gain of about two yards to the 28. Adams in to make the tackle, so it's going to be second down and eight yards to go. Second down and eight for Texas, and they have the ball on the Tennessee 28-yard line. Texas leading by...